what uh what what's the timing on bringing him in? Ten minutes in. Yo, we live. What up, chat? Oh, punk ass niggas in the chat. <laughs> Chat added as usual. What? They already in. They already in. They already in it. Locked in for a Tuesday. Bored as hell. Motherfucker supposed to be at work. At Do Dirty House. Got off the sticks. Oh, I'll take this off. For sure. Let's get it. Yep, they said it. Who, wait, who a punk? Go ahead, get him. <laughs> Ages zero. Change the game. Put that respect on his name. Look, with the honor call for greatness, the chosen a few that carry the gift of genius. Who do what they do? Who possess finesse the blessed with desire? It's true. I'ma say it loud, none other than who? Some swear by Nikes, others love Adidas. Rappers be rocking crowds, I'd rather rock arenas. You may have a nice Welcome back to Gills Arena, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Oh, Whoa. Damn, yeah. we got, they in here. They brought the energy. We got, a, we got a lot of people. They, yeah. they missed us. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. We got a, you know. They miss us. <laughs> they miss they us. They miss me. Oh, What's good, Mr. B? Yeah. What's good, Mr. B is back in yeah, the building. Playing stupid games. <laughs> Mr. Bill Big Games, huh? Oh, God, Lord. Here we go. Let's go. Our, let's see if we can get through this show today. <laughs> let's be one minute in, and the shit already started. Bro. I hate y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Gil's Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy, as always, with the legend Gilbert Arena. What up? What up? We got Mr. B, Brandon Jennings. I'm back. With I'm the back. He's already. We got Rashad McCants in the building. You know how we do. How y'all doing? Did you say you need the bigger Jumbotron? Yeah, you know, we gotta switch it up for the bigger one. Okay, well you should donate that, this one to my crib. Hey. No, I put this one in my office and then you can have the other one. Let ah. me get those little TVs in the back of your office. Mm. No? Yeah, okay. <laughs> say that for I the thought we, I thought we, For the steppers. I thought we had, had bonded over these last five months, but nonetheless. Mm. So here's what we got cracking today. James Harden sent a message to Daryl Morey and the Sixers, but will it, what impact will it have on the process this season? Former NFL star Michael Orr got blindsided by a 360 deal by what he thought were his adopted parents. Mm. Shady. Shady, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> you back with the accent. Do you know what a conservatorship means? Oh. I'm taking your money. All right. All right. <laughs> Shit. All right. And Magic Johnson's birthday was yesterday, so we got to salute the greatest point guard of all times. Mm. And when I say greatest PG of all times, y'all can't say shit. <laughs> on the counter in the chat. Let the numbers reflect. Mm. But before we get into all that, as always, the show is brought to you by Under... Wait. Ooh, okay. <laughs> it's coming soon, so we're going to We already about. did our top fives, man. Keep in you. <laughs> <laughs> Let it be known. <laughs> but this show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. If you have not done so already, go ahead, download the app. Use promo code Gills Arena. They will match your first deposit up to $100. We got WNBA cracking. I did some, some NFL preseason pick -ems. You know, the Raiders betrayed me, as always. Mm. College football about to start. NBA will be back soon. Hopefully, got some World Cup uh, pickups too. Mm. Yeah, I don't know Austin nothing Reed. about football. If someone was running for twenty six yards. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Did you pick up? Did you no. pick up? You didn't pick up? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't either. I was it like, seems doable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like hard as 26 yards. <laughs> you got to be a degenerate for preseason, though. But Raiders betrayed me. They left the, the, the QB that started in, in the third quarter. 
I took his lower, thinking like, oh, he gonna get a couple, you know. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know. And then he <laughs> came back third quarter. I'm like, oh, shit. Josh McDermott, you ain't shit, but it's all good. And we do our mostly fan segment at the end of every show. So we see everybody in the chat already thriving, talking shit, hating, uh, getting your opinions out there. Some good people in the chat, some mm-hmm. diehard, dedicated soldiers. A lot of haters too, though, but we love y'all nonetheless. Y'all help keep the lights on. But drop a good question. Include your underdog fantasy username. And if we use your question on the show, we got $50 bonus coming to you courtesy of the fine people at Underdog Fantasy. They're breaking bread, giving out bags. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about that too in a little bit because we need, you know, we need our bread gift. <laughs> I know you got your bread. I need whoa, just a whoa, little bit. Whoa. Just a little bit. Whoa. <laughs> 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 oh, front bread. Give me a Don't put me back in 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 free. <laughs> this, you're not, this you're not free. getting no bread. This for free. <laughs> Predators, all judges. Do this for the people. We do it for the love. <laughs> we make no money doing this show. We do it all for the love. Okay, hilarious. <laughs> and as always, if you can't watch the show live with us, go ahead and check us out on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcast from. So let's get right into it. NBA legend Magic Johnson celebrated his 64th birthday on Monday. So what better time to give him some flowers? Uh, Magic, five-time champ, three-time finals MVP, three-time MVP, 10-time All-NBA selection, mm-hmm. four-time assist leader. Mm. In addition to his role as Lakers president of basketball operations, Reason why we have AD, we raised that banner in the hardest championship in NBA history in the bubble. Oh, God. <laughs> and he blessed us with one of the best memes in Hoops history. I've been talking to people walking here. We've been talking about next year, and I'm sitting there saying, I'm not going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Look, y'all know you're a big Lakers guy, big Magic fan. What's your favorite Magic Johnson memory? I guess it, it, you know, I was young when he when he played. So I guess, you know, up at UCLA, you know, the UCLA runs, just watching Magic come down, you know, he'd get ripped, call foul anyway. You know, that, <laughs> most, that, that star power, like, it's clear and ripped. He'd foul. Check it up. Check it up. Right? Uh, but just, you know, for the first time seeing, like, Magic, um, you know, as without, you know, going to a Laker game. So that was basically my first NBA player. Mm. Bro, the groans in the, the men's gym at UCLA where Magic used to call fouls, some of the most egregious fouls <laughs> in the history of pickup basketball, <laughs> and dudes would just have to hand the ball, you know. <laughs> Come on, Magic! <laughs> but, you know, the story was... pass, and you, uh, foul. Foul. Check it. <laughs> yeah. Check up. I didn't see them miss a shot and wait for it to see if it was going to go in or not, then call the foul after. But they used to hold court, that center court. And do whatever. But Brandon, you an LA guy. What's your favorite Magic Johnson memory? Well, I wasn't born, but um, <laughs> damn, okay. I mean, I, but but I would have to say his shot against Boston, the hook shot. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, that was like one of my favorite moments of him, like going in the Boston Garden and hitting that shot. Uh, you know, I think that was for me his biggest moment. Fuck Boston, as they say, for everybody who's watching Winning Time. <laughs> and Rashad McKenzie, how about yourself? It's got to be just a fast break. You know, him being able to come down and all that. Cause like back in the day when we used to play at the park, it's always every day you used to choose who you're gonna play like today. It was either Michael, Magic, or Bird, right? And so you knew if you're gonna be passing that day, it's gonna be Magic. You're gonna, I'm gonna pass that bitch. There was black birds out there? <laughs> I don't know what you mean, black birds. Like people like- I'm like- being very today. That means I'm shooting three. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm shooting three okay. all day from right. Bangladesh. You Bro, know I seen that? a black dude at Venice Beach within the last month confidently wearing a Larry Bird jersey. I've never heard somebody say I'm gonna be Larry. <laughs> black be Larry. What you mean? <laughs> just being black. What you mean? <laughs> I don't know. Just, yeah, it ain't got nothing to do with color to me. <laughs> black bird. I love. I'm about to be Walton today. I'm about to be Bill Walton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never seen that. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you're, you're a lifelong Lakers fan. Where do you rank Magic amongst all-time Lakers? <sighs> Think about this before you say it, because we gotta roll around on these streets. Mm. Same nigga said Zeke is overrated. I don't know. It's going to be, it's between Magic and, and Kobe for me. Okay. Um, it's the, you know, I, I, you know, when you watch, like, winning time and you watch the impact Magic had, you know, it's hard to remove the impact of yeah. the legacy he built. I grew up on Kobe, right? That was my version of 80s Magic for, you know, all the 80s people. So, you know. 1A and 1B for me. All right. But you're not going to say hoo-hoo, and I'm not going to press you <laughs> out of respect for both legends. <laughs> Brent, how about yourself? I mean, it's, it's, 
I mean, it's tough now that Winning Time has came out and I've seen, like like you said, his impact. Um, but of course, I mean, Kobe Bryant for me is, is always going to be number one. But Magic, man, just the fact that he created this Showtime and mm -hmm. the way he came to the Lakers and just revamped it was just, it was just different too. So, but I still got to go with Kobe. He was also king of the work too, Rashad, as you know, Magic. Ooh. <laughs> see, you, they give see, you that look. You know, see, sometimes you, you just, just fucked up my whole standing. <laughs> but you got, you had. I had him at number it. three, <laughs> and, you <laughs> threw work. and you threw in the work. I said, Why? "Lord have mercy, he was the king of the work." That <laughs> might you know, went a little too hard, obviously, as we saw later on this. Clip, a little but, too, little too much. But still here with us, so we love Magic, obviously. But man. Let's you know, you too. <laughs> <laughs> the work, man. Um, I got to say, on '91, we were like, "Damn, mm. <laughs> get your mm -hmm. last daps in." I mean, uh, <laughs> and here uh, we are, 2023. Magic still here, kicking, getting it, <laughs> working, <laughs> working the work. Hey, um, <laughs> I had I had him at a hard three, right? But you gotta like one A, one B. Kobe is definitely number one for me, but I can't. I can't just push him over. Like Shaq is two for me. Okay. Like the Aristotle did a lot for Lakers, um, but then there's so many. You know what I'm saying? Jerry West, there's Elgin, there's there's Kareem. What about there's, Kareem? That's yeah, what's Kareem. Kareem and Will. Like, but when you talk about Magic, Showtime, it really put them on the map. Yeah. For and sure. I think just him just embodying what LA being in LA is. It's like fast paced game, being able to win. At the same time, making it fun to play, you know, Kobe embodied the same thing, but Magic put that smile on his face. You know what I'm saying? I think that pushed him at the number two with the work. You know what I'm saying? Work, <laughs> work, work, get work her, adjusted. Say get our last dab set. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I'm just telling you. Back then, back then, 91, yeah, no, I, it, was no, I, it was like, damn, bro. It was like, <laughs> no, no, I get, no, I get it. I just didn't get our last yeah, here. You know, you know, back then, with you. everything going on, yeah, it was over. Meanwhile, Magic's yeah. still here, getting it, still being the legend, <laughs> greatest tweeter of all time. But Magic's influence on the game has been felt on and off the court. For those of us who grew up in L.A., uh, you know, Magic made sure to look out for the hood with a slew of businesses, the gym, Starbucks, Fat Burgers, uh, first movie theater in L.A. hood history with unlimited strawberry soda refills. Yep. <laughs> with the great intro video back in the day. No longer with us, uh, the theater, but Gil, you know, San Fernando Valley, but it's L.A. We include it. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's all a part of it. What was Magic's impact on the city? I don't know. Bruh, I, 91? I'm saying that, but I didn't now. start liking basketball until the damn but with the, came in. The businesses, the Magic TGI I Fridays. They don't hit, have that here. You never hit a Magic TGI Friday? In the hood? Ladera Center, Gil. No way. How many, in the capital of LA. How many, how many transfers on the bus did you need to get there? These six. <laughs> <laughs> you Bro, was, first of all. You wasn't crossing over the hill? Oh, no, we never, uh, the Valley Kids never, we didn't go past City Walk. And Ooh. we did, yeah. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> sunset. Really? No, hell no. I you know what was on the other side of that? No, I believe it. I believe it because I live in the valley now, and it's hard to get go past. Yeah, I'm, anything past Sherman Oaks, it's like yeah, you're all right, like, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, right. too far, too far. Yeah. It's already take thirty minutes to get to <laughs> Sherman Oaks right here. Damn. No, yeah, we never left. We never crossed. Like, like I do not know L.A. Okay. Like when I got drafted and they had me in Carson, right in Marina Del Rey, yeah, Fox Hill Mall. Oh, that was like a war zone. The Fox Hills? What? Yeah, yeah, the Fo yeah, yeah. Fox Hills different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. With the Say No being over there back in the yeah, day. Yeah, over at West LA, yeah, where I bounced around. So, Brad, swap me. Swap me. The Slauson Swap. Yeah, never, never been. Never. Never. never been. I don't need a white T-shirt. Not, not bad. bad. Not that bad. <laughs> not th I'm good. Deep discount. <laughs> I'm, I, look, I, I've heard stories. <laughs> no, thank you. Pick a reasonable hour. Get in. Get out. Wave cap. You ain't get no wave cap. <laughs> no, the wave uh, caps. Yeah. So, Brandon, you're heavy in the business game now. What is Magic's influence on that side? Um, like, I miss when Magic was really, like, in the city. Like, I think he used to have his midnight runs, right? Yeah. Magic, oh, Magic yeah. Weekend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but when I started seeing Magic was when he did the Starbucks, when he did the movie theater, and the TGI Fridays. Um, so that was just dope to see, being young. Um, and then that's when I really started to know who Magic Johnson really was, too, mm -hmm. once I started seeing different things that he'd done. So from a business standpoint, I mean, it was awesome for us to be able to go to a Magic Johnson theater, like mm -hmm. a black man with a theater. Like, yeah. that, was, that was different. 
I mean, I'm not from there. <laughs> but you're here now. I am here now. Magic owning teams and doing what he's doing, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's magnificent for, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, you want to tap into, like, having an example yeah. of somebody that can actually, you know, take, take their, their status and resources and build something. You know what I'm saying? I remember when I first came to L.A., um, I didn't go to the theater, but I remember being at the Fat Burger. Okay. And the, and the theater was, like, across the street, and everybody was like, hey, man, don't go to that theater, man. They be peeing on the floors and what? Da, 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 da. I was just like, damn, <laughs> magic. Never. You know, the floor. But then uh, I went to the TGI Fridays and I was like, mm, <coughs> mozzarella sticks is fire. Yeah, yeah you can really get sticks. some mozzarella, mozzarella sticks. Is fire. Some mozzarella sticks is fire. I'm like, dude, is this nigga back here cooking them by himself? <laughs> what are you doing? But, you know, magic definitely uh, influenced you know, the people who want to do business, and I was one of those guys. Yeah, the Magic Fridays used to be like the club for those who oh, remember sure. back in those days. And sure. press ratio was very high. But we salute Magic. Magic, happy 64th birthday. 64. Yeah. Ooh, hold up. Ah, Not shit. Somebody at the door. I didn't tell you, but I parked in front of is the next IRS? I know oh, you, niggas looking oh, for me. Oh, you did? That was, so they was coming for me. That was rough. Shit. Who is it? How come they actually miss the person coming in every time? <laughs> Are we still, it's, we're looking at working it out. Okay. Oh, the man. The man is here. Hey. What's up, brother? What's up, brother? How you doing? What's going on, Legend? What's up? Good to see you. We got Jeremy Levine, co CEO of Underdog Fantasy, the reason that we are here, the man that keeps the lights on in the you building. Oh, you good? Oh, watch you good? Yeah. He pulling out. Yeah, don't <laughs> watch the crown. <laughs> don't, t don't touch the crown. <laughs> so everybody knows and loves the app. Here's the face, one of the faces behind the app. We appreciate you and the rest of the Underdog Fantasy team. But before we talk turkey, because we got some business we got to discuss <laughs> now that you're here, uh, you know, you, you grew up a diehard Celtics fan. We're going to forgive you for that. We just had the I Lakers magic talk. talk. shit earlier. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Larry Bird and all that. <laughs> but you got, you got a great story of, of finessing your way into the Celtics locker room during, what, the 2008 championship? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I grew up a huge Celtics fan. I used to get the $10 seats all up in the corner. Okay, so you like us. And sneak my way One down. Of us. And, uh, I was there. I was there game six against the Lakers. Um, sorry, guys. <laughs> and uh, I think, what was it, 40-point win? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, after the Allegedly. game, I, uh, <laughs> after the game, I walk down towards the court. I actually see, I see a, uh, a buddy I used to play basketball with. He's a ball boy. Gives me daps, pulls me on the court. So I was kind of roaming, and I'm in bliss, right? The Celtics <laughs> just won the championship. I'm 20, right? Like, best moment of my life. And I'm roaming the court, stuff in my pocket with confetti, kind of just like out there like, what am I doing? But bliss, right? <laughs> Ultimately, a security guard grabs, grabs my hand, pull, like, twists it behind my back, pulls me off the court. And I look around, like, most of the people are gone, um, but I see a little cluster right behind the Celtics bench. So I go and sit there. I see everyone's got, like, kind of name tags or a badge on. I grab a Gatorade towel, throw it over my shoulder mm -hmm. so I can't see that I don't have one. And I'm just with my buddy. We're just sitting there as every single, everyone leaves, and every player comes out. Um, right there, I'm right behind the bench, right? So they all come out, I get to congratulate every single player, like by first name. I remember being like, PJ Brown was on team, like, PJ, amazing. He's like, thank you, thank you. You know, like they all do their on court circuit of interviews. They're for 30, 40 minutes, and like it's dying down. Um, and I look at my friends, like, what do we do next? He's like, let's go to the locker room. I'm like, all right. Um, yes. We walk towards the locker room, there's three security guards standing, standing there. They go, where are you going? I go, the locker room. I'm like, right this way, sir. <laughs> Open up the door. Remember, I'm a 20 year old kid, I got my Gotta Beat LA shirt on. And I walk in the locker room, it's just littered with champagne, beer cans everywhere. They've got the plastic tarps up. Um, there's only one player left. It's Sam Casselli. He's in the corner doing an interview. <laughs> walk right up to him, give him a high five. Um, took a piss in the locker room <laughs> and, and, and walked out. <laughs> right? And like, all right, that, that just happened. Just took a piss in the locker room. <laughs> I don't know what to do. What was I going to do there, I don't right? know what to do. <laughs> like, I had to do something. Did you flush? I think it was one of the natural. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Automatic. <laughs> automatic. That's, That's important. It's there. advanced at this point, yeah. man. They flush on their own. That's fine. Yeah. So we all been putting in work with the pickums on Underdog Fantasy. Some of us are doing better than others. Gil has been the latest to, to ride that there heater. But just tell, tell us a story a little bit about uh, Underdog Fantasy, how you became the hottest fantasy gaming company in the game. Yeah, so, so we're the fastest growing fantasy company ever. Um, started the company just over three years ago. And had a really simple, um, really big ambitions, really simple vision. We, we believed, and, and believe even more today, if we can build the best games, 
um, for sports fans in America, we're going to build the biggest company. Mm -hmm. And so that's the entire, everything we focus on is how can we build the best games and experience and bring the best content to sports fans in America, really focus on the American consumer and building and innovating for them and trying to do things different, really rethinking and not just doing the same old school stuff others have done. Mm. For sure. We know you're always innovating over there, blessing us with a lot of player-focused fantasy sports yeah. game. What does Underdog Fantasy got coming for us in the future? We got, uh, we got a lot. I mean, look, our, our ambitions are huge, and we want to build any game sports fans are playing. We want them to be able to play it on Underdog, and we want to give them the best experiences. So right now, we've got three core fantasy games, right? And that's, that's the business. We've got best ball, we've got daily and weekly drafts, we've got the pick'em games. Mm -hmm. um, we're building more fantasy games. We're doing more content. We've got the breaking player news. Um, but we're also going to build sports betting games as well. Mm. So we've gotten some sports betting licenses. We've been building our own platform. Um, we're building the technology all entirely. We have 100 engineers, right? We're building the technology all entirely ourselves to be able to build really unique products and games, not just the same old sports book that FanDuel and DraftKings are trying to bring over from Europe and just force down Americans' throats. No, we're bringing, building something natural for the American fans. You see that fly? That's that's draft king. That's draft king. That's Asian. <laughs> Asian. <laughs> Fucking Asian, man. Right He's listening. Fuck it out. Yeah. 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 We need Kenya right. back here to. Dude. He got the Miyagi <laughs> skill set. <laughs> Yeah, we don't, we don't roll with colonizers from Europe, so we, we use, okay. we rock with, with under, I'm just saying, yeah, they be coming over, they don't brush their teeth enough. <laughs> just be real. Y'all know, anybody who's been to England, crusty mouths, but. <laughs> so to that extent, you mentioned DraftKings FanDuel, you, you've been going heavy on Twitter calling out competitors that are trying to play with our paper, because as you know, we're in the underdog fantasy as well. We mm -hmm. talk about player focus. We got three players, one assistant pimp hosting, <laughs> doing our thing. So what's the current state of fantasy gaming and why are some of the originators now turning into full-time haters? Yeah, so, so we're in a battle right now and it's really with FanDuel and DraftKings. Um, they're using their money, their power, their influence, the years of political contributions they've made, their lobbyists, to go out and try to say that what we're doing isn't fantasy. Mm -hmm. um, and they've been trying this for, for a year now. Like they're, they're trying whatever they can to slow us because they're scared of us. We're beating them in fantasy. We are bigger than they are in fantasy and they've been around for 14 years. We're bigger today than they are in fantasy. More people playing our games, more people enjoying our games. Um, and they're scared of us, so they're trying to slow us down because they can't compete fair and square on product and on innovating and delivering experience for sports fans. So they're doing it in back rooms, right? They're trying to tell regulators, hey, shut these people down. Um, but they haven't been succeeding because, because we follow the laws, right? We build games under the fantasy <coughs> sports laws and make sure that our games all fit the laws where we operate. Better question. Yeah. Would it be fantasy or considered a fantasy like if me and Gil did a shoot off? <laughs> Would that be considered fantasy? If uh, we want to create stats for it. <coughs> right. So to be a fantasy game, something's got to be three core prompts. Okay. Um, it's got to be a skillful game based on accumulated player statistics. Okay. And players from more than one team. Okay. So if you guys are against each other, mm -hmm. two separate teams, mm. you can create a fantasy game around that. Hmm. So we got three teams. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I like that. Because I've already, you know, we tried to do some shit, but it just wasn't a competition, really. It was just, like, lopsided. So I was trying to get him, get his stats up Who's statistically. You know, It's already 10-1. It's already kind of, okay. you know, we already can blast it. So he's next. Like, I'm, I'm going to get my stats off on him next and then I'm try to make it a fantasy thing. Because for them to beat me is kind of like a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I get, I get you. I get so I it. want to be able to make it real, you know what I'm okay. saying, where we can make it the real I'm thing. Just, you know, we got the we got the technology to go out there right now. I'm just saying. Just saying, yeah. You know? I just wanted to make sure. I just wanted to make sure. We can go upstairs and figure it out right, right now. Right now. Right, 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 right now. Right now. I like that energy. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that that was a possibility. Okay. That. So for in the future, the statistical stuff that you're saying, like, a lot of people don't know the difference between fantasy and sports bet. Yep. So, like, could you break down, like, what the difference is? Yeah, so, so the key, right, it's those three things. Um, a fantasy game, again, it must be a skill-based game based on accumulated player statistics mm -hmm. from more than one team. So it can't be the outcome of a game, right? It's not that the Lakers going to beat the Celtics. Mm -hmm. It's got to be player-based and accumulated statistics of those players. Can it just be one team? Because I'll fuck with the Lakers, but I, you know, the, the others, 
<laughs> maybe <laughs> betrayal. <laughs> betrayal. <laughs> yeah, look, this is this is part of why we're getting our sports betting licenses to be able to offer sports betting games as well. Okay. Because with a sports betting license, you can offer way more to customers, right? And all we want to do is offer the best experiences to our customers. So with a sports betting license, you can do all the same game, right? You can take players just on the Lakers to go over and the Lakers to win. Mm. But you can't do that in fantasy sports, right? Okay. That wouldn't fit under the fantasy sports laws. So you say you want to offer better experiences to your customers. We want to do that as well here on Gills Arena. We feel like, you know, we've stepped in. We've offered a great experience out here. Our season one's coming to a close. Yep. Uh, we made first team all basketball podcast. Facts. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. First team. Yeah. First team. 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 But that means we're eligible for that super max extension. <laughs> hey. So we've been calling and emailing. Y'all ain't been responsive as we would like. <laughs> as responsive as we want. So we all we all rookie. Because he's 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 like he's like you like envy because you've been here. Yeah, I'm like a three year, four year. Yeah, year. Oh, oh, yeah. He's been here. He's been here. We the rookie, so we, we got all rookie. Yeah. We all rookie, yeah. rookie team. Yeah, first, first five. Yeah, first yeah. team. Fight over that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, one on one. Oh shit. Sure. <laughs> 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 he said y'all gotta. Y'all gotta go fight for that. Well, we got you on the couch. You can't duck us now. So respectfully, what you got on our season two, homie? Oh, I'm excited for it. You guys are doing oh, what? Oh, really? Yeah. Um, you guys are doing three days a week right now? We are yeah. currently slated for thrice you guys, a week. You guys ready to work a little bit harder? They, uh, a, they five, asking for five, four. Yeah. They five. asking, That's like, why y'all don't do Monday? It's working, five. right? Five. Are people five. loving it? Yeah. Yeah? Let's do four days a week. Ooh! Gilles oh. is coming four days a week! Where the smoke? Where the smoke? Let's go, Let's go, Let's go! 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 let us go <laughs> he like look at you like this. It's
It's basically like it's basically like basically like if you say something, you know what's gonna happen. Yep. Basically now. Yep. So it's like everybody better tuck their nuts and just sit there and be quiet. <laughs> and they don't want they like you say, a player empowerment when you're talking about guys having perspectives that are alternate from those analysts, experts. Like how JJ was checking Stephen A in certain aspects of the show, where it's like, damn, Steve, all this time we thought you was right. Mm -hmm. But JJ came in with some facts about experience. So, you know, Perk and, and RJ probably the only ones that's left. But yeah, and then Jay, I think JJ and RJ doing some game coverage. But look, ESPN, keep doing what you're doing. Y'all don't need no former NBA players. Keep rolling out the squeeny lineups. Oh, head media. <clears throat> Like, you know, like, y'all don't be talking to Woj and all them like that. Mm. Not, yeah, so it's yeah. like, you know, it's... You know, the funny part is, it's, it's like the lineup, <clears throat> when you're talking about the basketball knowledge, like, we can't, we can't knock them for, you know, they've been to school. They've done all the, the things that they can do to be in the position they are. But you have to really understand that talking sports to really get to, like, like information, you need athletes. Mm -hmm. You went to school for a certain part of it. The, I, I said the viewers, you're a, you're a great viewership. Like yep. you're the closest viewer to the line. Yep. And then you're watching the athletes inside. For you to figure out what's going on inside that field, you need athletes. 100%. Right, so at this point with that lineup, when, when you guys are talking and one says, so how do you feel in this situation? All y'all should say nothing. What do you think you would do in this? Nothing, right? That's not y'all expertise, Oof. right? So all you guys now has to do is just talk from a viewer standpoint. Do not talk like an athlete. We don't care. We do not care about your opinion about what a person should have did in the moment of what's going on. Mm. That is not your field. Mm. Just like it's not our field to debate certain type of statistics. Right, and certain type of law, that's not our field. Mm -hmm. We are players who played the game. We see the game, we played it, we study it. We know what a good shot is, what a bad shot is. You know, we know what the two for one and three for two. Like, we, we understand the concept of it all. You guys don't, mm. right? And the fact that this is now becoming a YouTube uh, player podcast movement, that would be a bad lineup moving forward. Yep. Because yeah, as as big as the guys are, eh, it's 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 an outdated it's an outdated. It's out, yeah, it's, it's out an outdated cast for today. 100%. Like that that lineup would have been great five, six, seven years ago. Yep. Yeah. It's a it's a powerful lineup, but this is like the Lakers with Shaq, Kobe, then you bring in Carl Malone, and you bring in Gary Payton, and like the it's it's. It would have been dope. Mm. Yep. It did great on paper, mm -hmm. but it's not going to be, like, you're not going to, you're going to be spending more time getting player podcast clips versus everyone getting, no one's going to get y'all clips. No, they like Fox, they like Fox News. What is yeah. it, like Fox News now? Yeah. It's you're politics. Gonna, they're going to be, well, they're going to be running player, they're going to be running player podcast clips and responding to them. No player is going to respond to talk, them. Yeah, 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 yeah ever talk at, to them. Look at the metric though. The metric is TNT. The players on TNT, NBA on TNT. That's the metric that they've been successful being consistent with players' perspectives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. that's the most powerful thing. And that's what I was speaking on. The perspective of a player trumps any opinion of someone that doesn't have that experience. Yeah. Even though we accept your opinion, mm -hmm. because right. everybody's opinion in a conversation is noted. Mm -hmm. But when I give my professional perspective of something that I've done, you it's 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 a completely separate conversation now because now we all have a perspective mm -hmm. and they only have an opinion and that's why it's like when we watch Stephen A. Smith talk it's like man we don't we don't relate to what you're saying because that ain't what that ain't how it go mm -hmm. we know how it go yeah. it don't go like that yeah so I know it, it's going to be interesting to see how they move forward knowing that we're on the rise other guys like us are on the rise and we have perspectives they don't have I mean, or just or just cancel them I mean, but that's what I said. The information—it's it, it, that's what I said. On paper, it looks. It looks it's an it's an amazing lineup. I mean, the 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 knowledge that those guys have, you we can't knock. But when you're talking about 
real-time information in debating. You can't debate a player. You can debate a player with stats. That's, that's what's up, right? You can debate a player like this player is good at this and that, yeah. but that's not, that's not actually reality. Right. You can say, oh, this player is the best defensive player. Uh, there's no one. You, who, who was first team? Uh, um, oh, the white? Defense? Yeah. <laughs> defense white on Boston? Yep. yep. Right, he was first team. Yep. Right? I guarantee you there's no guard in the NBA. There's no guard in the NBA that, that he guarded will, will, will say, I, He's the I, best. I, I was scared. Yeah. <laughs> I was playing against him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. White made, white made second team. Second team. There's no, there's no guard in the NBA that would say, I, I was afraid of him. He was dude. tough. So he was a tough guard. First team, Alex Caruso, Drew Holiday, uh, Jaron Jackson Jr., who also won Defensive Player of the Year, Brooke Lopez, Evan Mobley. Yeah, but then if you ask every player, if you ask every player guard, who was the hardest Who's the best defender? Drew It'd Holiday. be Drew Holiday. Yeah, Drew Holiday. Holiday. Right? So there's a different metrics that you guys are not seeing. You're not seeing real time and how the game is being played. Yep. They put Alex right. Caruso first team? Alex Caruso first team. Hustle there's guy. There's nobody in the NBA that was scared of him. Wow. Former but, that, but, but that's what I'm saying. Like, you, you, it, it's a, it's a, you, you can't debate players themselves. So all you really can do is talk about the player. Yep. Mm. Talk about the game. You're not gonna give no information of the game. Talk like about it. Talk about right. it. That's, that's just that's just that's just what I see. Like you, you can't you can't give information on the game. You're just gonna talk about the players and you know run your narrative. You know, just like the same narrative of a guy who averaged a triple double, right? And you said he was stat chasing. Right. Was Joker stat? Ch did anyone say Joker was stat chasing last year? Nope. No, right? Nope. But Russell was stat chasing on, on stats that had to do with hustling. Mm. Outplaying. You're, you know, you're saying he's stat chasing re a, a rebound, which is a hustle thing. Like, I'm hustling for this. Mm. Uh, stat chasing, getting my teammate the ball. So Magic Johnson trying to break this record. John Stockton trying to do. Those are not stat chasing assists. Mm. But, you, but they made that a thing to discredit how, how his hard, engine yeah. worked. Has he played right? that But that's, that's what we're listening to. Mm. Eh. Well, I say keep it up, guys. Doing great work. More squares. <laughs> keep going. More, more squares on the show. More squeenies. And we're going to be right over here. I mean, more TV time for us. Yeah, yeah. We're out right here doing what we do, pushing you out the paint very quietly and politely. But we're about to get real aggressive here. It ain't 80s basketball no more. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta, you, you gotta let go of some of this shit. Like, it ju you just can't. Final, <laughs> what was the final shit? That's wow. over. It's over. <laughs> it's over. I'm sorry, y'all. It's yeah. over. Right? <laughs> you know, you, to be honest, what helps Stephen A, though, like, what helps Stephen A is he do have his own podcast. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, some of them got smart and pushed their own podcast to relate and do questions and be updated to today's time, yep. right? So yep. that helps him. Like, I, don't, I don't know why he would join a group like that. The bread, um, bread, I know, of course bread, bread yeah. but I mean, you're... But I know what you're saying. Like, he don't need that. Nah. For sure. Like, you know. Well, let's... I've never even heard Woj. I just thought he was just a dude that gets information, tweets it out. I didn't know he was actually a, a personality. Yeah, that's weird, ain't it? Because it's like, does he know basketball or does he just... Is he the mole? He just gets the information, he's the he's and, the, and then he tells everybody what what's going on. It's like I didn't know that you actually watched the games. I don't. <laughs> he's the he, like I mean, it's cool. It's cool, but you know, with, with someone like him, he would be easy to beat because he's taking the most powerful side, and he's gonna run with that side, which there's gonna always be two sides, and you're never gonna get the other person's side that mm. can combat this narrative that they're trying to run. So you're going to get trumped anyway if you're always on the wrong side. <coughs> you know, you can't, you can't do sports, eh, unless you're a Laker fan, you can't do sports, <laughs> you know, with, with, with being too biased. Yeah. Right? You can't give real information if you're too biased. Like, right. like the furthest you can go is a 60-40, unless you're a Laker fan. You know, then you can go 100 to Yeah, unless you're a Laker but, fan. But other than that, you have to stay... In the middle, you got to try to stay as close to the to the middle. Yep. Well, it's possible. Unfortunately, it's big business now, and, and the bread is flowing. So, every time you see something, you really got to scratch your sniff. Ooh, does that smell like boo boo? It smells like some bullshit. 
yeah. and read between the lines on a lot of stuff you're saying. But that brings us to our next point of conversation. We got to talk about James Harden. Uh, he started some big trouble in, over there in China. When asked about the Sixers during his tour out there in the other land, Harden has some harsh words for President of Basketball Ops, Daryl Morey. Daryl Morey is a liar, <laughs> and I will never be a part of an organization of any sport. Let me say that again. Daryl Morey is a liar, and I will never be a part of an organization that he's a part of. Thank you, man. The best is the. Yeah, I'm about to say. I'm about to say, yo, do they know what he was saying? Hell no! <laughs> they know, they know <laughs> that's why he said it twice. Do they know? The translators <laughs> all trying to figure out how to translate. <laughs> he, they was just, yeah, fuck it. You know what it sound like to me? Like he, he was telling the work. I don't want nothing else to do with you. <laughs> don't come up to my house no more. Don't call or text me. I'm mm -hmm. good. I'm good. They said they had Google right. Translator. Did did Google Translator. <laughs> I hope they did. But uh, so yesterday we had Andre Iguodala and Evan Turner. They pulled up to the arena. We got a special episode coming on Thursday. Definitely don't want to miss that. A lot of nuggets and gems and mm -hmm. just great perspective from Iggy and Evan Turner. But uh, Iggy had this to say about the Harden situation. Always telling people, know what your leverage is. The same thing, you, you always say that. Mm -hmm. When you go into a contract negotiation, know what your value and how you can leverage yourself. Know what opportunities you have on the other side, like to your safety net. What is James' safety net? Daryl Morey has a history with China mm -hmm. where he can say something and the backlash from what he says, it may not be any because there has, is a history there with Maury and China. So it was a great move yes. out of leverage mm -hmm. by James. One, because it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be hard to discipline James because what did he do wrong? Right? Mm -hmm. And James gonna sell some shoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's ultimately why he's over there. Yeah. And so, you know, we're so quick to say, do what he said, oh, he said disgruntled player, because Kyrie, yeah. he had James back because the headline from Woj was disgruntled mm -hmm. player James Harden. is like, why is he disgruntled? Mm. You know, why isn't the front office ever disgruntled? Mm. You know, they always put players in a certain light. And what you're hearing a lot now is players have too much power because we're getting smarter and smarter because we know how to move and we know how to say certain things and we know how to use our leverage because when we make mistakes, it's used against us, correct? Yeah. But when they make mistakes, we've never put ourselves in the position to use their mistakes against them as well. And I just think he just had a perfect opportunity to repeat himself. Mm -hmm. mm. Oof. Well said. So reports are Harden was advised against making the statement by his agent, but the beer stood on business. And according to Jason Dumas, despite Harden's comments, Maury is unmoved and has no plans to trade the former MVP unless the Sixers get what they're looking for. So just kind of echoing what Iggy was saying, there are reports that Harden and the Sixers had an agreement that they were going to give him a long-term deal after he took that $15 million pay cut. Uh, Harden surprised many when he opted in the final year of the deal this season, meaning he wouldn't be eligible for an extension, I think, till next year. But it became very apparent the Sixers weren't going to give him that long-term bag. So Gil... Start with you. Was Harden blowing up the spot like this the right move? Yes. It's the American way, mm. right? You know, you know, you can sit there and you know, as reporters, as fans, and say whatever the fuck you want to say, right? But if you, if this was your job, and you took a pay cut with the idea of being reimbursed later on for the company, and when that time came, they didn't reimburse you. Trust me, you will have the same mood. So the fact that this was a deal that we had planned, that, yo, okay, I'll take 15 million less, you know, we'll give it back to you later. Sign it. Cool. I, okay, cool. I did my part. So you're mad at him now for expressing that you guys lied to me, right? You know, players always have more loyalty than the to the teams, and this is why I say never take a fucking pay cut for these people. Mm. They'll fuck you anytime they can. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> James, I'm with you, man. Listen, I'm with you, bro. We're gonna get drunk. Right? We got that James Harden wine. We're gonna get drunk. 
I'm mixing it. Hey, listen, I'm mixing it. Hey, hey, hey. I'm mi- mixing it with the tough crap. Uh, no, don't do that. I, mean, uh, <laughs> I don't know what's about to happen. Don't do that. It might be an explosion. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Brandon, what do you man. think about this hard six or what? Don't pick and roll me. Don't me. No, I mean, I just think it's just the system. You know, I don't know really, you know, I don't blame James for what he said. You know, I don't blame the owner for what he did. I mean, I just think it's just part of the system. Um, you know, teams, owners feel like they get they get holed out a lot too by playing players and they don't, you know, win. Players feel like, you know, I'm loyal, I've been here, I should get paid. So it's just like that's the f- part of the union. Like, you know, we got to find a middle ground um, because now owners too, they're, they're, they're going to feel like, okay, well, you know, I'll just sit sit back and and keep doing it, or just keep doing the same thing too. And players are going to keep getting played. So I think I think it's two sides. Like the owners are tired of it because they're not really getting you know everything that you know if they're paying you, they're not really getting what what you know everything that they pay for back mm. uh, in a way. Because if I'm paying you thirty, forty, fifty million dollars and we're not winning or we're not even getting to the Eastern Conference Finals, well, fuck. I mean, we're losing revenue money. We're losing all type of stuff. And the money that they're giving us, we can't even get paid because none of the star players are playing in the third or, or even making the finals that, mm. that we're paying. So, I mean, I don't know. It's just part of the system. You know, it's just part of the system. I mean, I don't feel bad for either side. The game is the game, as, you know, as they say. The game say. is just the game. Well, you know how I feel about the whole situation. I've voiced it a, a few times that the Philly situation wasn't going to work from the start. 2021. James leaves, goes to fucking Philly from Brooklyn. I'm like, immediately. Philly has just never been an organization to, you know, follow through on their word, right? It's all, they always been in the process. And, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, even yesterday when we had the conversation. It is a process, though. You continually, like, even since Barkley in them, it's like, y'all still in the process. You, the fans are great fans. You know, like, they have a right to demand greatness out of their players and want something. And AI was the closest one to bring them to the glory. But it's like to bring James up there, to bring Doc up there, and and it did not work. And then now they bring in Nick Nurse in, and it's like the whole riff with Daryl and James. It's like it's disaster. It was already written on the tombstone. So now they got to live through it. Now they got to go through the funeral. You know what I'm saying? They got to put the dirt down. They got to move the fuck on. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to hear the, the pity party and the crying and, oh, man, he ain't, man, listen, you ain't winning. You trying to get the bag. You got to win to get the bag. There's a no-brainer when you get the bag when you're winning. So at this point, it's just like, yo, go to your next team, James. And what, what, but that, that, that's the problem. What, what, what was the deal? Like, like, yeah, but that's, the, but that's the problem. You're, you're like, fuck winning. That wasn't our deal. Our deal was I take $15 million less to help, you, the team, help, to help, to help, to help the, team. the team get better. Right. I did my part. You said, if I do this, I'm going to get a longer deal. Right. Okay, my deal is up. Where's my longer deal? I did my part. Is did it in writing? Get, did the team get better? No, it don't matter. All right, so, all right. So, well, so here's well, the situation. According to CBA, they couldn't, obviously this was all under the table type shit. No, for they sure. They couldn't have I mean, a but that's, yeah, yeah, but that's the problem. No, with you the, know the, but you I, know the game. I know, but what I'm saying is, like, it's easy as a fan. How about this? Philly fans... They tell you if you get if you you know buy all your tickets this year up front buy whole yeah. season tickets yeah. you know at this price mm-hmm. you know fifty bucks a pop mm-hmm. next year we're gonna break it down if you go all season we're gonna break it down to twenty five for the season and then they keep it at fifty yeah. you motherfuckers would be mad hundred percent hundred percent they tricked you to buy it for fifty to sell it back to you for the same price again pissed mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so you're gonna be mad like I, I don't I can't I can't I don't give a fuck about your win at this point I, you told me take fifteen million dollars less cool okay now where's my long deal ah Oh, <laughs> ah, you know, we going, nah, I don't want to hear none of that, yeah. bro. Yeah. Hey, that's where the locker room situation come in at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, James hit me up, bro. I'll come over there. What's, how are you doing? How you doing, more? How you doing? I mean, I mean, you know what hey, I mean? Allegedly. Hey, remember that I mean, story you, you told me? That? <laughs> where the wall in that, God damn it. I, 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 mean, I mean, it's basically like the music industry. Yeah. They, they played them like the music industry. Mm-hmm. You know, come over here, give us our, every, all your sauce. 
You know, we're going to throw parties in the Hamptons. We're going to do all that. We're going to do all that stuff, but we're going to take everything from you, and then we're just going to lowball you at the end. That's what they, I mean, that's what they did. It's kind of like the music industry. And put it they, on your tab. Like, yeah, I mean, they knew what they had. I, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, they just knew what they had. They played the game the way they played it. So this is... I mean, it's, I mean, no, it's, talk about it, Gil. No, yeah, go ahead. No, like it, it is fucked up. It's I'm, fucked that's up. What I say. It's just that we got to figure out a way for the system. Like, Something with the system, like. Uh, and here's here's a, here's it is right here. Players, y'all should look at this. Do unless the owner has proven to be a man of his word. Yes. Do not take pay cuts anymore. Fuck a pay cut. Yeah. Right. The goal moving forward should be trying to be billionaires. If you're taking a pay cut, how the fuck can you be a billionaire? Because they're not taking pay cuts for you. No, because they're trying to be billion. We've never put in our mind to be these, yeah. these multi 50 million, 100 million. Like, we're, we take the pay cut, we do all this sacrificing, and then we retire. Then we want to build this empire. No. Build your empire now while the money is coming in. Stop taking pay cuts for billionaires. You're a millionaire taking a pay cut for a billionaire. Yeah. This is like being rich. <laughs> it's like being rich, right? You know, we're going to dinner with other people, and then we hit them with the, yeah, we need to split this bill. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, you, you know, you go ahead and split this bill down the middle, right? Yeah, I, don't like, I don't like going to dinner splitting bills. It's the worst. Everybody got three or four cards. They just put it on one fucking card. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, it's, it's imagine us doing that to, to yeah, regular people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, hey, you know, split the bill. You know, we're going to split it evenly. You had three chicken wings. <laughs> evenly. Yeah, yeah. Three evenly, Yo, but I had? eat how I eat. I yeah. eat how I eat. For <laughs> I had three Van Torres. <laughs> Rio, right? Yeah. You know, but yeah. that's, I, I, I just don't, that, that, but that's my mindset. Even though I was a guy who took a pay cut, but my pay cut comes from an owner I trusted and I knew what he was doing. Yep. Yeah. Like, I know what they're telling me to pay you. The money's yours. Fuck what they're talking about. You, you do with what you want with it. Yeah. But, so what you're saying, like, this owner wasn't his guy like that? Obviously, if you're reneging, yeah, if you're reneging on your deal with your guy. Right? That's, but, that, that becomes a problem. It's just supposed to be your guy. There's no way, like, we have examples, right? Miami has shown loyalty to Haslam. Yep. Right? Big We've years. seen that. Right? The pay cuts he took... They're repaying a man back, right? Um, for all what he did back when they were winning championships. They're paying him back. There's no way he would be on this team. If this was any other owner, he would have been out of the league six, seven years ago. So why do they so why so why are they showing their loyalty to um, Haslam but not to Dwayne Wade? Mm -hmm. That's something we have to ask. You know, D so Dwayne Wade. Wade. Yeah, that's took one too. But that's what I said. That's what something we have to ask. Like, you have like, to ask Dwayne Wade behind the scenes of what what what. Like you know what I'm saying? Like well, it's yeah. Wade County, right? But now he's he's a part of the Jazz. Owner. Yeah, that was that's was, that's a bad. Somebody explain it. Yeah, that shit don't make no sense. Um, <laughs> like you no, know, like yeah. Dallas. Yeah. You know, with Mark Cuban. You know how he did with Barrera Dirk. and Dirk and Tyson Chandler. We got to remember, I mean? it's a different time then where we did value winning over. The max pay days, right? And right. I think that's why we all kind of agree on certain things and elements of you took it to pay cut because you you actually felt like the owner fucked with you, but then you were trying to win, right? Mm -hmm. So do something with this pay cut money to help us win, right? Mm -hmm. So if that's not the case, which is what we are finding out now in this new element of the game, they not trying to win. They just trying to make more money. So they want us to take less money so they can make more money. So now the, the message should be to the players, like you just said, like, fuck all that shit. Get yeah, your bag. Yeah, like and the integrity of the game has been fucking compromised. I'm, I'm just That's like really, I'm, a, I'm, just, I'm really thinking about it now. Like he took a pay cut. I'm gonna blame this Harden deserving the situation for fucking cutting them a deal. Like. I mean, for what? But that's what I said. It, I mean, I've, yeah, I'm not cutting. I mean, three-time scoring champ, ten-time All-Star, seven-time All-NBA. He's on the NBA 75th anniversary team. Why the fuck do I need to take a pay cut? Yeah, because yeah. Read, yeah. read that line. What was that lineup again? Hmm? Of, of his resume? No, that lineup of uh, Woj and oh, Woj yeah. and... Yeah. No. Oh. Because people like that, that will kill him. Yeah. Because th they get to talk directly to the owner. Yeah. Mm. Right? So, so what ends up happening is, you know, players are considered the bad guys. We're employees. We're no... Like that, that, 
listen, we get the money aspect, right? But no different. We are the employees to the regular day people. We're no different than the regular day people going to, if you work at Walmart, we are you. Yeah. We're not yeah. the, we're not the yeah. CEO. Yeah. We're not the yeah. president yeah. of it. We're the fucking employees checking in, door check, yeah. making sure the counter, beep, beep, beep. Yeah. We're, we're that to the NBA. Yeah. Right? We're, we're the bottom, we're the bottom line. There, there's bosses on top of bosses on top. We gotta remember, there's an assistant coach above us, the, the head coach, and then the, ge- the assistant general manager, his a- the assistant, then the general manager, then the owner, and like, there's, we're, we're the lowest level. Right? We're the lowest level, we're the employees. Yeah. So, like, when you sit there and you turn against the player, mm. Knowing what you're turning up against, you're turning against the player for the, the big boss. Yeah. Right. There's a reason y'all have um, lockouts and you have uh, strikes and yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, you, there's this writer strike right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, because there's shout out WGA, give us our bread. Because the heads <laughs> ain't playing fair. Nope. Mm-hmm. No matter how much the actor's making, the people above him ain't playing fair. Right? And that's what this is. Like right. you're, you're, t- you're convincing your employee to take these discounts to then fuck them later. But yeah. the problem, to, to echo what you're saying, Gil, the problem is, is that these billionaires now can manipulate the media so the everyday human being looks at y'all like y'all are the assholes. Yes. Like you got enough money, Gil. Why, why the fuck are you complaining about? Instead of looking at the motherfucker who got billions of dollars, never goes to them saying, you got billions of dollars. Why don't you just break some more bread and give Gil a little bit more money? That's why Gil said the podcast is powerful for us to tell our perspective so that they don't run with that narrative. And I'm like, I appreciate when you, you know, recanted the statement about all the players having podcasts because when, if James decided to start a podcast, he'd, be able, he'd be able to really tell it'd, it'd you what happened. It'd be over. It would be yeah. over. It'd it wouldn't be, be no Woj or yeah. Chris Haynes trying to be like, well, we got our story. And yeah, 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 fuck yeah, your yeah. story, nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You a mole. This yeah. is coming from the horse's mouth. Well, James, you don't need to start a podcast. Uh, we got a show for your ass. Come on up to Gills Arena. Huh? You know, we I got, got the hard one. He sent me, he sent me this, baby. Come hey. tell your side of the story. And we'll be receptive. Hey, hey, any lady that want to drink a little wine, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, yo, so what happens now? So, okay. Like, 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 like far as with, like, like as, as far as with, with them, like, you know what I'm saying? With, so here's, here's like, the situation. Back? So Harden said he don't want to come back, right? He mm-hmm. said he's not going to play another game for the Sixers. It can go one of two ways. First way is he says, fuck y'all, I'm not coming. Unfortunately, if he does that, according to CBA, CBA, if he doesn't pull up, show up, and play, that the Sixers will basically retain his rights. He doesn't get to become a free agent next season, and they more or less have to allow him to make a move then, but they still have his rights okay. as a player because he didn't fulfill that year of a contract. The other situation, which seems like it makes the most sense, and again, we talked about this what, last year, whenever it was, with the, the Ben Simmons, which, you know, you as players... It just hit that backyotomy. I need, I need the backyotomy. Like, <laughs> you know, at some point, um, I, I really want to see how the big media treats this because, you know, at some point, you know, you crucified Ben Simmons, right? In this, in this role. Are you going to crucify the next player? So you have two players, two different years, yeah. doing in the same situation. Is there going to be any emphasis on maybe the team is behind what's going on? Some of the stuff, yeah. Right? So, you know, we can see this play. It's the easy playbook, right? You know, um, you say you're not going to trade him, right? You're not going to do any of this. <coughs> he decides he don't want to go to training camp. You find him. You talk bad about him, right? You paint this picture. Yeah, yeah the blah, blah, blah. You paint the picture of how horrible he is as a player. You're going to hold money. And he has to show up, right? You're gonna try to push him through all these different things so you can pick on him. Mm-hmm, yeah. Like, oh, run a line drill, dude. You know, we yeah, know yeah, the yeah. stupid shit yeah, that yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when he rejects the first time, you suspend him for uh, detrimental to the team, mm-hmm. right? Because you get to take a paycheck now, okay? Right? And then you're gonna use taking the paycheck to, 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 to make him act right. Well, unfortunately, those days is over. Yeah. Motherfuckers <laughs> make too much money. <laughs> yeah. Like, you can't. You can't use money against the, the, the NBA players today. When it took us 15, 20 years to make 100 million. Eh, it takes three now, two. Some of these motherfuckers, two. Two years they make 100 million. 
These shoe contracts ridiculous. They that that them 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 game checks don't mean shit to these new players, mm -hmm. right? So you're using the same tactics, and then you're gonna try to trade this player, and then you're gonna be mad that you're not getting the value that he's worth. One, you're not gonna get the value because you dirtied the product up. Okay. You gave the world all the bad information about it. So if I'm a buyer and you're telling me how bad this this product is. Why the fuck do I need to give you the Lamborghini value for it? You done made it seem like a fucking Honda. Now you made me. You made it seem like it's a Honda. So I want to give you a Honda price. Then you're like, oh no, no, I'm not gonna sell it for this price. Right. Then don't talk about it like that. Don't say, don't tell me how it's flawed, and then want perfect condition. Uh, that's, prices. That's the yeah. wildest shit about yeah. it. They're Maury, stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maury yeah. standing on it. Yeah. Like, we don't want to give you a long-term deal, but we don't want to let you go no. unless we get this, this maximum value. But you're already saying, like you say, he, well, you already said you don't value the dude. Mm -hmm. You only want it for one more year anyway, so just cut your losses. That's, it's, it's, it, that's what I said. The, 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 the tactics are so fucking... They're, they're outplayed, man. Like, we get it. We get it. You're stupid. Right, you guys are stupid. You're old, you're stupid, and dumb, right? We you're get it, your right? You're gonna tell us how bad he don't practice, he clubs, he this, he that. We get it. Yeah. And then you're gonna try to get fucking four draft picks and first rounders, and you want the moon for it. And then that person's gonna sit there like, you just told me how bad it is. I'm saying, look, I'll take it off your hands. <laughs> I'll take it off your hands for this price, right? If you want me to pay Lamborghini dollar for it, then treat it like a fucking Lamborghini. Mm. Don't try to tell me it's a fucking Honda for the fans and then try to give me under the table Lamborghini prices. Fuck you. I heard what you said. I want it for that price. <laughs> you told me he don't practice. Yeah. You told me he likes the club. You tell me this and that. Well, I want the price that this shit comes with. I can fix that. Yeah. Don't tell me this and then you're like, oh, no, 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 no. And don't really do that. <laughs> I just want the I just want everybody to hate him. I just want him to get booed. Like <laughs> the, the fucking tactics are old. Like we've seen what Jimmy Butler really is. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, he's a bad locker room guy in Chicago. We, we, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Get him out of here. So the fans feel good. And then now we see Miami don't have nothing bad to say. Man, values up. The confidence coffee flowing. Confidence coffee. You know, so I use up. If I'm if, if I don't look, I don't think James gonna play. Nah. For real? But by his choice or by the Sixers' choice? It would be the same exact thing that happened with Ben Simmons. Okay. Right? So round two. They're going to suspend, suspend him. They're going to try to suspend him. And at the end of the day, as a team, why are you going to put a product out there that don't want to be there? When we talk about the Dame situation, because right? Because they don't... I know. The, I just think the owners just kind of like whatever. What, what, like, what, like they're they're playing that same like whatever game too now. That's I why I said the system but, is is fucked. But man. ain't it ain't it about how professional James and a Dame going to be approaching the situation not to look like a certain player? Because Ben didn't approach it like he was being a certain type of player. They suspended him because they knew that his energy wasn't like a part of the team, but it wasn't like he's going to the media saying, fuck them, I mm -hmm. ain't practicing. He kept it professional, right? Mm -hmm. So like for everybody to approach this situation professionally, I feel like what James has done is he's put himself in a position to look like a businessman. Like I don't fuck with the, this guy because he fucking lied to me. I'm not trying to be a part of this team, but if I need to show up to training camp, I'll be there but I ain't practicing. So, so okay. Now if you're the coach, are you going to play him? At the beginning of the season. When you know you got to. No, because the Sixers coach is who? Um, Nick Nurse. Yeah, I don't think so. Of course not. But if you're hard now, do you force their hands, show up, do all the things? I, I don't... I, I mean, listen, you really don't really... This, this, well, it sounds good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> Would you... <laughs> your girlfriend just caught you cheating. Are you having her cook your next meal? You having her shave you? Oh, no, shit. Hell no. <laughs> Trust this motherfucker. Why you would put, you in these scenarios, nigga. Why would I put, that's tough. If you're the coach, blade to the neck. That's, that's, that's tough. That's nigga. Hot grit. But I'm saying, if you James, if you if you're the coach and staff, and you're trying to move forward, and you know the guy don't want to be here, why am I gonna put him on the floor? I don't know. What what are you gonna go out there, shoot the ball one time, five, six, seven turnovers? What the fuck am I really doing? Then I gotta bench him, and then like it's a pointless thing, mm -hmm. right? So either. Get you gotta trade them.
to move forward? Why are you going to start the season off knowing we already know the play? What you know these? He, he, he probably got a hundred, two hundred million in the bank. And like he, we, we see he in there dancing. He, he obviously he happy that motherfucker, so he don't really give a fuck about what y'all talking about, right? So you start the season off, and you you sitting there. He, obviously, he ain't gonna mind gonna sit there just like this. Y'all can boo all you want. What what is it really doing? It's only affecting you. Is it is it setting an example? Like I said with the Dame, they're trying to set an example for these young guys. No, they are. They to let are. them know we not are. fucking they playing this shit with y'all. We tired of getting hold. We what? tired of they, we they tired of y'all taking hold, advantage though. of this. What is it? What 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 example are you doing? This ain't 1991. Listen, we listen. The new that man gets paid 48 million. That's okay. three four seasons. So a lot of but does it? But does so his a lot pride, of owners is losing money right can now. Can his pride take the the hit to the stats? The hit to are right, we gonna check you in, check you out? Oh. You know what I'm saying all that type of all shit. Right, so so what are you gonna do? You gonna go out there, right? Mm -hmm. You gonna go out there, average thirty ten and right? You gonna go out there, average thirty and ten, to do what does it do? What, what does it do? If he if he doesn't want to be there, you no, yeah yeah yeah. You go out there, you go, you average thirty and ten. Is that gonna help your trade value? No. Everybody know who you are. Yeah. They're going to give you an extension off the max? No, it does kind of no. help your trade value because it let them know you can still play and you still want to play. Okay. Instead of going out yeah, yeah. there averaging yeah, 10 30, and 5, yeah, 32 and 10. you look good. Yeah, like, hey, we will trade for him. Bring yeah. him over here. Bring him over here. Okay, he averaged 30, 32 and 10. What Then what? What are you going to do with him? I mean, y'all yeah. package him up. You package him up. Y'all rank number one in doing all this. What are you going to do with him as owner? Trade him? Package him up. He don't want to be here. He's just doing his part. No, the owner might come back and say sorry. So you, you're going to package him? going to keep him? You're number one. You're number He's one. a free agent after this year anyway. You're number this the last year. That goes back to the LeBron shit. Like, do you let him ride or do you keep him? Do what, you what pay him it? what you owe him now? Do you no. pay him what you owe him now? The, the bridge is burned. He don't want to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you talking about? Yeah. But if he paid, he they paid him what he owed, he's still going to be on that energy? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, he called you a liar. He called him a liar. But, hey, like, come like, holler at me. I'm going to give you double. But here's the problem now. He can't you sign. Feel, you feel better? He can't sign that extension until next season, so you got to let this season play out anyway. No, what I'm saying. It's not like they could come with a long-term So what I'm saying is that, you, you know, he goes in and, and then he goes on James Harden mode. Yeah, demon time. I'm going on James Harden. Like, you can't win. There's no winning scenario as the as the team, right? You're playing so good, we're in number one. Now we got to trade you. Fuck the rest of our season, up. right? Right. right? But it depends and on who we win. get. Who we know. get for you matter. on that? The same, I don't know. The same I don't know. They did it to AI. They, I mean, this, they tried to do it to AI. What I'm saying, the same right. connection. The same connection ain't dead. Whoever you bring in ain't gonna be connected. Right. So you you you're gonna lose what you have if you're number one and you traded to bring back pieces. You can only go down. But if you if you're mm. thir if you're number eight, number nine. And he's only averaging 10, 10 and three. Who? Then why would you be playing him? Because we, because, because we, we, we trying to send a message. We're trying to set an example. Like we're gonna play you, but we're not gonna play you. Move him in, Nick. Move him out. Fuck up his stats. We're gonna send him a message. Then, Listen, then how are you gonna trade ten and three for pieces that he's worth? That's what I'm saying. You, you wouldn't back ten and You three? wouldn't trade him at that point. You keep him on here just to send him, send him a message. Like we not trading you, like they saying now. We not trading you. And so you need to make a decision whether you're gonna be then, James Harden then I'm or at, not be James I'm at, Harden. I'm up at the end of the season. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I'm, so, going anyway. I'm going anyway. So what did you teach me? Are you going to give your value based on how you play this season good, or are you just going to sit it, it out and I'm make it look it, bad? It don't matter because if any smart person... Think about, think about that they did that. He averaged 10 and 3, right? Mm -hmm. And then they just say, all right, you go in the free agency market. Right. right? One, as the, as the team, you done lost the player, didn't get nothing back for him. Right. That you fucked up. Yep. Now Golden State gets him. For four million, and then he comes on James James Harden time. Yeah, he goes. I got I got James Harden on the Warriors for nothing. Right. I'd have to lose no pieces. He, he goes to Miami. I lose no pieces. He he can go any. Look, if he goes to the end of the season, he can go anywhere he wants. He has enough money to take whatever pay cut he. You think he'll still have that mentality though? I after, think Daryl like, Morey like, on that type of time where he like I don't give a fuck. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't like, give a fuck about yeah. him going there yeah, like, for I, nothing. Yeah. We wanted to get rid of the nigga. But but here's here's the other. Fuck him. Here's the then, then let him walk now. That's what, that's what it makes no, it he makes said no an example saying, I'm not going to let you walk when you want to walk. I'm going to push you out when we ready. We don't want you. Then you should, then James, then, then, then I'm, I'm the owner. I'm firing him. I'm firing Murray. Who the fuck are you? This is my business. Yeah. You said what? This is what? my business. If you're the owner, you're firing Murray. I have a guy that's worth this, and I'm trying to, you're going to give me what I'm worth. I'm not. 
He's not the owner of the team. You're right. a fucking employee too. Yeah. So you're telling me you just let this 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 guy? I paid all this money. You let him walk for nothing? Yep. Fired. Yes. Agreed. <laughs> talking about this. So that's really the or, or, that's or, the decision they need to or, make is to fire him or not. Or it you, ain't about James. Or, or you trade them both. I mean, you trade him and Embiid. I think Embiid can go too. Hmm. Instead of just James, I think if we're gonna clear house like this, thank you for the MVP year, but you can go also because we know what we because we know what we getting out of him. Mm. Well, that's, so that's, I mean, I mean, we're gonna clear house. Let's just clear them both then. Mm. Well, that's we're gonna talk about that in a second, but let's hit real quick. So after Woj dropped the article calling Harden disgruntled, got some support from an unlikely source, Kyrie, former Nets teammate, posted the following tweet. He said. Is he disgruntled, Adrian, or is he looking Daryl Moore, or is he holding Daryl Moore accountable for his dishonesty and lack of transparency throughout the contract negotiation process this summer? Technically, that would fall into the criteria of disgruntled, but the wording of that article and the way it makes Harden look versus the team for bullshitting and pulling back, you know, reneging on that that bread. So Harden and, and Kyrie may not have seen eye to eye during their time in Brooklyn together, but Kyrie ain't with the bullshit. Mm. So at this point, we've talked about it like. Yo, fuck it, he got At the end of the day. So what yeah. happened in Brooklyn? That's what I want to know. What happened in Brooklyn with all three of them? Hurt. Hurt. We heard a little bit. Hurt. I think the, Was it injuries? Heard some reports or like, was it? I heard it at Kyrie. Like, I want to know what happened with, like with, with them in Brooklyn. Like, I think like, they like kinda, you know, because. Everybody wasn't playing. It was, it, was, it, was, it was vax <laughs> mandate related. Kyrie was only there half the time. Nah, you got, you got to go the year before. You got to go You got to go the year before. Y'all talking about the ending. You got to go. The COVID year? You got to go the year where where they all three they played your bucks, okay. Smacked through y'all first two games, okay. Like made y'all look like babies, okay. Right, and they got hurt. Right, Kyrie went out. Right, Kyrie went out. James Harden had to come back. He was half half who he was, right. So you come back the next year. Then COVID hits. Then you know you got you know taking you know taking shots, right. Don't want to take the shot. Like, I don't want to take the shot. Like, why well, I got to take the shot? Mm -hmm. half, the, half the league ain't taking the shots, but because mm -hmm. of the city I'm in, I got to take it. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I don't know what this, I don't know what it is. Right? And this is the bad part about the media then. Have y'all apologized to Kyrie. to Kyrie now nope. for standing, knowing what we all know now? Mm -hmm. About everything. So many lawsuits, have, all this is going on over those shots and what happened. Man. Are y'all standing on what you said to apologize to this man? Killed him. Mm -hmm. Y'all killed him for not taking it because y'all was scared. Mm -hmm. And But he put thought to it and realized he started asking questions. And now that we know, hey, people are suing, that shit ain't like... Yeah, yeah. No, there's no apologies that's being happened, but you guys still have the same mentality of what he did then. It should be clear. That, that year should be clear now because he was actually right. Real shit. Right? So, you know, shit went down. People started looking because as teammates, if I'm not taking it and you guys are trying to win, you guys are going to look at me a certain type of way. And he just, just, na just naturally. Mm. Right, just naturally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you gonna yeah, look yeah. at me a yeah. certain type of way because I don't like, yo, we trying to, we came here to win. You come on, take the shot like we did. And you're like, whoa, hold whoa, on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right? You guys are gonna naturally look at me. Yep. So that started the bullshit, right? And then from there, just a trickle down effect. Yep. It happens. Mm. Right, it just didn't, it just, it just, it's a, it was a trickle down effect. So it wasn't really no bullshit going on there because Kyrie was healthy. It was but just the COVID he, shit. But even, the even, like, but even with, with, with James going there, so right? I, the, so why, the offense so why didn't his teammates like stand with him then? With, with, with Kyrie, like, when the why shit was Katie, going down? Yeah, 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 you're, yeah, yeah, like why Katie and James didn't uh, stand with him? Because the the, the, the y'all took the shots, and they just like why you won't just take the shot and yeah. just yeah, fuck but him up? yeah, but you my brother, like we like what, was the communication there? Like like did they tell KD Kyrie? KD did say some shit in the public. He was like he has a right to feel the way he feel like. You know, he don't want to take it, he don't want to take it. You know what I'm saying? Like, did they have a discussion about this? Like, like no. did all three of them have a discussion like, yo, all right, yo, we're going to go in here, yo, we're going to take the shots or, or anything no, no, like that? Well, since it's, since this, the, the, it's over, right? It's, you know, this mandated shot shit was over. The, one of the problems were, was this. Everyone wasn't taking the shots. Yeah. Right. Most of them didn't even think about taking that shot. Some of them got fake yep. shots, yep. right? But some of them got fake shots in New York. So he's like, once he made the, the statement, 
that's what kind of fucked it up because now he can't take the fake shot. Right. Because he already stood on, I'm not taking it, I'm not doing this. So him going in like, yo, we can get you the fake joint. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> you know, we got the paperwork here. He's like, okay. they could, he couldn't do that. If you got a vegan mm-hmm. shot, I might. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, but what I'm saying is he couldn't do the fake shot like everybody else did. Yeah, okay. The and vegan, that was really no the, meat in it. That, no. was, the, that was really the, the problem when he publicly said it. He couldn't stand back on it like everybody else did who just, oh, I got my, like, let's, let's just be honest. Yeah. You know, so I know there's going to be people out there that really don't understand this. Who the fuck was checking if they had the vaccine or not in the arena? You can't check. Nobody. You right, can't right. check. They know there's, no right. there's no this way to check. There's no way to check. This is my building. Right. <laughs> who the fuck is checking my athletes? Just, they just checked the car. No, bro. who? Who? No doctor. What employee? No doctor. What employee? That, who, who, who's the owner? Josiah. But not to be confused. No, what I'm saying, Josiah. Josiah? Yeah. Which employee under him was telling his players that they can't come in that arena? Right. No one. Nobody. There was not fucking one employee that was going to stop a player from coming in the arena. So it was all stupid anyway. Yeah. Mm. Like, this is my, this is my business. This is what I'm doing. You're not going to tell. Like, let's just be honest. We've been in there. We, people had, just like kids got fake IDs. We've, yeah. Everyone had fucking fake <laughs> yeah. cards. Yeah, I had the fake. Yeah, yeah everyone yeah. had the fucking fake card. 90% of the NBA had fucking fake cards. Who was checking these fake cards? Employees with fake cards. Yeah. Like, it was, just, it was, it was stupid. Yeah. Right? But it was a situation where because he publicly said it, it put a spotlight on him. Because they was pushing a certain agenda. And that's what I'm saying. It's like no one, no one else looked at. There was no one, not one player that we've heard the football player who had a fake ID. Yeah. Because someone outed him. But the, the, Rogers. It never came out in the NBA who had fake card. Because no one gave a fuck. <laughs> like I'm a super fan and I work the ticket thing. Like I'm like a LeBron James. Oh, this ain't this real. Ain't real. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't real. Oh, shit. Yeah. LeBron, yeah. I, can't, I can't let LeBron, you in. Get in here. Yeah, yeah, you can't yeah, let yeah, you yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck tonight. Come on. It, it, yeah. was, it, was, it was dumb. That's hilarious. <laughs> it, was, it was all, it was yeah. all BS. Yeah. Right? You know, he got a bad rap for that. And Okay. Listen, you see my neighborhood, right? right? The, the, my neighborhood is owners not employees, Mm -hmm. and they walk up and down this street and shit, talking business, and I'm sitting on the top, because I sit above. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) above. Hey, hey, y'all doing down there, white folks? You know, so, you know, so I was asking, I was asking, hey, you know, uh, what shots are you guys getting? And they looked at me like like I was an idiot. Shot? Me? Oh, no. What do you you mean not getting a shot? I'm a boss. Yeah, what I need, I don't need to go in my business. The employees, I, I just got to make sure they get the shot. Wowzers. Mm. I was like, hmm, wait, what? I'm, I own the business. I don't need to, I don't need to go in there. As a, that's the employee. I got to make sure, I got to follow the, what's the rules say? They all got to get shot and mandated? That's what I got to tell them to do. I don't got to do that. You said they. <laughs> I was like, no, they. Fuck. Yeah. All of them. All of them. All the owners are doing that. <laughs> Bill, not to interrupt you, but uh, Pack Watch has been completed. We, we passed 10K on the stream. Oh, we passed oh, 10K! Yeah. Season oh, one! Oh, hey, Gil, yeah, we oh, still in season one, G! Oh, 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 Gil, oh, oh, we still in season oh, one! Smoke oh, in the blood! Oh, Gil, you see what happens when y'all keep it original? Yes. See what happens when you keep it original? Shit, we have another K right now! Gil, smoke in the blood! Still season one! It's time to go. Time. It's time to smoke. Yeah. We got a break. It's up, one. We already said 12.5. Uh, <laughs> we said 12.5. We did say 12.5. We did, we did say 12. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, we did. We I did. Ain't gonna lie, wait, wait, we said 12.5. We said 12. 12. We, we said 15. We said 15. We said 12. 15. We said 15. We said 15. We said 15. We said 15. Tell everybody, come on in the chat. Come tell on, them to come up. Tell your auntie. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. But let's let's get back to this hard we real quick. We got to the oh, ten though. We yeah. got to the ten. Hey, yeah, we, we got to hey, the hey, ten. Hey, I took a screen oh, grab up. Some evil motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> they, they rocking, but so we got a question from the chat. Uh, yeah, this comes from Isaiah Reed. Underdog. I'm Amori. I ain't doing it. You're doing it. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm getting out of this. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm a nigga. I'm a nigga. It was a liar. It was a liar. He was not smoking the blood. I will never smoke a blood with you. Uh, so, we got a question from Isaiah Reed. Goes underdog name is Brooklyn R A S or B K L Y N R A S. I see. I always got to read this shit. To make sure I'm not getting duped. So, should an old star player on that last contract get paid for what they did in the past or what they are projected to do? Um, I was, you know, when when uh, when I was going through my negotiation, right? Um, and this is how it was broke down. I'm paying you for what you did for us, right? Um, your next contract you get is for what you're gonna do after this contract. You know, so when you think about it, like your rookie deal, mm -hmm. your rookie contract is off of what you did, yeah. right? In college and all, they're rewarding you. That's the reward. You're the number one pick, you're the number two pick because of what you did to this point. Your next contract is gonna be depicted on what you do for the next four years, right? So, you know, um, you know, so, you know, it's, it's reading what did James Harden do or what did any player do in that last year leading up, or those last four years leading up to this contract. Like, you know, some people get paid off of potential. Like, I'm trying to get you for cheaper so I don't have to pay you. Like, LaMelo La Ball. Yeah. I'm paying LaMelo Ball today so I don't have to pay him tomorrow. Ooh. Right? You know, like, is he worth 260 right now? Eh. But I know, but he's a franchise player. So I might as well get him for cheaper today because he's going to cost him maybe 40, 60 more million next year. Yeah. And I'm not, one, I'm not willing to take that risk. So you have, you have those situations. But for the most part, I was, I was told by the owner that you're, you're, I'm paying you for what you did. So then it's okay for the guy to come in after you give a nigga like AD all that bread and he give you 18 and 10. And that's cool because 18, he don't have to... Like, he don't have to play to the level of the money that he's received. It's what he's done in the past. Yeah, so if he goes 18 and 10 and 18 and 10, his next contract is going to reflect right. what he did. But he ain't worried about the next contract because I just cashed the fuck well, out. Well, yeah. Well, then, I mean, if you're like that, then, I mean, then, then you're a typical NBA player. You're not, the, you're not trying to get to the billions. That's what I'm saying. Like, I literally, but I ain't got the billion. Right? I got 500. I ain't trying to get to a billion, but you just gave me, I'm making 60 million a year. To average whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. How old is AD? 30 or 30, 31. Oh, yeah. I mean, he got time to get another. Yeah, I know. Okay. That's what I don't I know. Mean, so I, if that's what I said, if he averaged 18 and 10, that's, that's what you're going to get. I mean, he going to get another 100. I mean, he going to at least get another 100 or something. Well, with his, injuries, March. with his injuries and how his body holding up, it's like, okay, he could go for another one. But I'm getting 60 million a year to literally come in and average whatever the fuck I feel like averaging. But that, but that's what I'm saying. Your contract, your next contract is actually reflected on that. Yeah. Well. So you can go from making a hundred to making, you know, five, ten million. But this is after three years, and no, I've made think, two. Which five? It's five. It's for five years. No, so it was the two. Then he's got. He's basically got two left. I think it's three more. Now after that, so like 2028 or whatever. I think it'll be a 2027. So 2028 is like I'm looking around like man. But now you're about 34, 35. Now I don't you, need this shit no like, more. Like that, that's that's, that's on his legacy. That, you know, that, yeah, that, I'm going to say, yeah, that's on him. That on, that's on him. That, but, but five years from now, if you could squeeze out another... Two, three, four hundred? And four yeah. when he can opt out in 2027. That means he's going to have to really play. Yeah. Can, right? But yeah. you could squeeze out another 200 yeah, on your last deal. Like, shit. Yeah, but that go yeah, back to what Rick Barry was saying about Jalen Brown. He only averaged 18 points in the playoffs, and we just gave him almost 50, 60 million a year. So he would have to up his play to get more money for the next contract, correct? Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's like if you're not playing up to that par, up to that level. But if you're making all NBA teams, let's just say hypothetically, still at that point. But he deserves that you money. Yeah. But he deserves that money though, from from what he's all the work he's all, put in. Oh yeah, all the work for done, sure. Yeah. Like like that money he got though, I I definitely think he deserves. If it's available for them, yeah. For sure. You don't think that money in Boston? I think there? that that's just because it's available. Like when he was talking about how um, Tatum's going to get more than that, mm -hmm. it's because of the structure of the contract. Yeah. It's well, not Tatum's necessarily what you deserve. Yeah, but you, you don't deserve. think the work that he it's put in. It's not necessarily what you deserve. It's the structure that is available for you to get it. It isn't. No, no, I, I know, but I'm saying, even, but I'm saying the work that he put in, though, like in 300? Boston. 300? 
At 18 in the playoffs? I'm just saying. Just he, from the structure of the analytics? You look at the analytics, you say, man, he, they never really delivered and got it done. So you're talking about, see, so you, 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 whenever sometimes you did it, you, 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 you throw in the team aspect. They never done it. Yeah. It ain't they. It's him. If you're the leader. That, you, it, uh, this is one million, one million, one million, one million. That you, you, this is like, there's no, there's no, you can't value my product off of what I'm surrounded by. You Surround can. me. You want championships, so you, this is your business. Burger, fries. But this is, I'm the burger. Yeah, fries got to be uh, good. Then, then fries got to be, I need them well seasoned. That's you. They good, right? That but the your... burger, I'm buying the burger. So you're buying me. I'm buying the burger. But you're I also. get the but, fries. But the fries and the drink is also your, in your hands. But it comes with it. I can get the burger by itself, right? Mm-hmm. Right. But That's I me by myself. But it's not a meal. It's not a team. But you're purchasing. Stop it. But, stop it. But you're giving me the fries and the drink. What you mean? You're giving me the meal. As the owner? Yes. Okay. That's what I'm saying. You're giving me. Like, you're, you're trying to say, well, this is good together. And I'm like, yeah. I don't need that. You, yeah. You're paying me as the I burger. It. I get yeah, it. Okay. Yeah, I definitely get it now. So, so do you think James should have got that extension? James Harden? Yes. Yeah. Because they promised it to him. No, no, no. No, yeah. that's fine. The, the, the only reason is, the only reason because they promised it to him. Okay. Right? But if you go and look at the production in the last three, four years, yeah. right? Um, Points per game have gone down every, every I mean, you know, it, it, he's dipped. But did right. lead the league in assists last year. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and I mean, he changed his game. Yeah. He, changed, he, he changed his game. He um, changed it because of who he played with. It's 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 a hard thing. I mean, as players, we understand. We've been in situations where you tell us to do it, right? You have a vi- and that's why I hate fucking coaches. Like like if I can tell players, hey man, stop asking your coach which, what what would you expect from me? Yeah, yeah. right. You don't know. They don't fucking know. <laughs> they don't motherfucking know. Like it's, it's the dumbest. It's the dumbest thing we do. Hey, what do you expect from me? Because what happens is, players are so talented. They're gonna do exactly what you say. One to prove a point. Hundred percent. Pr- you tell me. Hundred <laughs> percent. We think you know. We think we're better off if you average twenty-two and ten. Hmm. Okay. When you've been averaging thirty. Yeah. I'm gonna give you exactly twenty-two and ten <laughs> just to show you. It's not good it's enough. It's not good enough. Yeah. It's not gonna work. And then what happens is you blame me for go- doing exactly we, what, we, what you, you said. But the fan, oh, said. Gil's production down. He don't got it anymore. He, you know, he. Because, he don't deserve this next be, bag. Because in your brain, you done grab it and said, okay, if he averaged 22 and 10, yeah. right, he's going to average this. Okay, this player's going to get that. This player. That's not how the fucking team works. Yeah. The reason I'm averaging 32 is because yes. they can't do it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right? They can't I mean. do it. That's why I, I got to do it. So you're telling me to be less aggressive because someone that you thought on this roster is going to up their aggression. Yeah. That's not actually how it works. You yeah. know what's crazy? What you do is you just bring in another talent, and me watching him realize, okay, he can do what I can do. Okay, let me go ahead and. Boom, boom, but boom. somebody that's already in this circle, that's not how it. You you can't you can't as the coach give this person power. He has to earn this power. Yeah. And I think that's what ends up happening with owners and coaches that they think they can come to a team, like Nick Nurse, you're gonna come to this team and you think you can delegate the power yep. on a team. Yep. That's, you can't. Nope. Right. They don't already yeah. establish that and then when training camp comes, whatever everybody worked on, that will establish a new order if someone has worked on their shit. Like, okay, okay, he's got a little bit better on the shot. Let me go ahead and give him a little bit more attention. But you can't tell a player, hey, I think you should shoot less because this will better our team. Yeah, it just down, yeah, it just downplay. Yeah. You, you just yeah, you can't downplay yourself while you're hooping. Like you gotta be you. Bro, yeah. it's so crazy like you, that y'all even saying this, because I've been in that situation in, in college my last year. Mm-hmm. But the coach never told me that. It was something I had to realize. Like, all right, I just came off averaging 20, going into the third year. We supposed to win the championship. How are we going to do that? Guys were kind of jealous of what I had just did. So I had to come into the year like, I'm going to have to pass more. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to decrease my scoring, up my assists for us to be considered a contender winning the championship. We ended up winning the championship. I didn't get no individual accolades, but I sacrificed for the, but it wasn't from the top. 
You did it. I did it. I made the decision saying, I know this is what's going to be needed for us to win. Coach would never come to me and tell me, I'm going to need you to pass more and need you to score less. But they seen it in my play. Like, mm -hmm. he's turning down wide open threes to kick it to this guy so that he feels better with his game. The, the, but you had the personnel to be able to trust We had the, the personnel. You know, Marvin Williams came in, certain guys came in, like you're saying, like, mm -hmm. if you don't got those assets, you can't really do that. And it's like, if you are doing that, you got to have the assets to do that. And I get it now, because I was trying to figure that out. Like, you just put it in perspective, like, damn, I actually fucking did that like, shit. Like, it just, it just makes me mad that, you know, a, a coach would come in and you think I'm, you think I'm stupid. Like you think I'm stupid that I don't know we got better. Mm. Like you don't like we just, <laughs> like you think you like we just got you know like it's like when Kobe got Paul Gasol and Ron Artest and all that. You think you have to have a conversation with him like yeah, please don't average thirty five. Mm -mm. <laughs> He knows who he just got. <laughs> you stupid. Like, this is not a conversation yeah, that you yeah, need to have. Yeah, 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 Let yeah. the talent figure it out. Wow. Like, I know who my players are. I know what I have around me. Right? You don't need to, you just need to make sure we're all managing and, just, how about this? You, you, you sit the fuck over there with your <laughs> suits and shit and get your little cork, the, 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 the cue cards and shit and sub in. Cue Let, cards. The cue cards. <laughs> like, cue who cards. needs to be subbed in at what Let us fucking do this part. Yeah. Right? We, 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 we got this. Right? And that's just, <laughs> and, and I think sometimes when coaches, coaches come into situations, they, like, like it, it just it always offends me when I hear coach come in and say, hey, you know, he told me to take this. Like, you're stupid. Ugh. You don't think a player smart enough to understand that he got a better player with him to know that he's not gonna shoot as much? Yeah. We 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 know They don't though. Yeah, we know. That's the insulting part about good players when they they assume that you don't know how to downgrade your game for another good player. It's like the All-Star game with certain guys, when you're playing in the All-Star game, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like either I'm going to raise my level of play mm -hmm. and isolate myself to be the best player and alienate, or I'm going to play with these guys and let them know, hey, man, I don't mind sharing the rock with y'all. It ain't about me. You know what I'm saying? We all going to eat. We here because we all the best players. It ain't about me per se, but certain guys have mentalities where it's like, hey, I'm here to show y'all niggas I'm the best. And then this nigga's like, I, like CP. CP was in the All-Star game like, I'm just here to mm -hmm. make sure y'all all eat. I don't care about who winning. And that's the dynamic of Hoopers because we all respect all both sides. We respect the selfish nigga that's trying to get off. Mm -hmm. We respect the nigga that's trying to d d distribute the ball. Mm -hmm. It's all a respect thing. Well, let's keep this thing moving. Very, very spirited discussion. We're going to see how this thing plays out in the coming days, weeks, months. But what we do know is Harden deserved that bag, and he's now spoken out, did it in China. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent leverage play, James. Keep it moving. Delicious yeah. wine as well. Delicious. Need to, yep, and the owners and players need to come with a common ground. I got that same don't, fit hard yeah, more in the don't, thing. Don't, I was going to wear it today. Keep happening. Yeah, don't, don't, don't promise me nothing. Yeah, don't promise <laughs> don't me nothing. Need. Don't promise me nothing and don't take no pay cut. Well, yeah, no, never take a pay cut no matter what you're doing in life. No. So let's talk about, we're going to switch to football, but it has a basketball spin. Uh, former NFL player Michael Orr, better known as Bruh from the Blind Side movie, filed a petition to end his conservatorship conservator ship, conservator ship. I got to say shit like 18 times, bro. <laughs> That's a big ass word. Over him with what he thought were his adopted parents, Sean and Leanne Tui. Uh, Sean went to Ole Miss. I think they both did. They were alumni. Just coincidentally ended up being the school that he picked out of high school to go. The jig was already hovering very early on in his life. So Orr claims the Tui family gave him legal papers to sign. He thought were necessary for adoption, but it turned out to be a 360 deal where the family could make bread off his name, image, and likeness. Or also claims he received no money for the Oscar-nominated film about his life, what? with the Tui family allegedly making millions while making him look like a big-ass dummy. I'm going to do the voice again. Michael, do you know what bullshit smells like? Because <laughs> that's what he got got with. And now he's fighting to get the bread they made off his life where right through the lawns back into his bank account. Mm. The thing is, we've seen a ton of Michael Orr stories. It's not relegated to football. We see this on the basketball side as well where people who are, who are too young get taken advantage of by people they trust. You know, they put their faith in only to get screwed. So Gil, we'll start with you. How can we stop adults from taking advantage of these young athletes, or is this something that's just gonna keep on going on? I mean, we have the, you know, in California, they have what we call a Coogan account for teen adults. I mean, teens that, that are like industry. It comes from, um, 
I forgot his first name, but it's Coogan, um, Adam's family, the actor from Adam's family, where his, the parents basically took all his money and he had to sue them. And they created a system where I think 15 or 25% of all the income made by the child goes into an account that no one can touch it until that child turns 18, mm. right? Um, that should be, now with NIL deals, that should be required for everything. Like, we're going through it right now where, you know, it's these, these NIL deals are not going to the kids, they're going to the fucking parents, yep. right? And it's, it's, it's ugly because now, now it's basically you're selling your kid for the benefit of yourself. Yep. Like you're, you're taking um, money today and, and risking, you know, rewards later. Um, <coughs> I think all NIL deals, all deals that have to do with youth getting paid, there should be no money being delegated, it should all go to accounts that can't be touched by no one until that child is 18 or out of high school, right? I don't give a fuck what your finances look like. It ain't about you, yeah. right? It's about your child. If your child never plays in whatever sport they play, when they turn 18, their hard work has been given. So if they can't make it to college, they go to college, they got two, three hundred thousand that never been touched, they can start something. Versus you done spent all the money on bullshit that they didn't get nothing for, right? And then when they didn't make it to the NBA and they're like, oh shit, oh, what I'm gonna do? Hey, work at McDonald's motherfucker now because your parent done fucked that up. Yeah. But I think all kids, like, I don't give a fuck what the situation is. As a high school kid, what money do you need? What fucking money do you need? Yeah, like where are you? If going? you're poor, you're on lunch tickets. Eat the fucking lunch. But I'm saying eat it for fucking three years because lunch ticket. Eat the fucking lunch ticket. Hey, if you're that good, if you're that fucking good, you're already getting paid by somebody behind yeah, the scenes sure. anyway. You're being taken care of anyway. But this bulk of this money, that should not be touched. There, there, no NID. All you fucking companies that are just like you're you're paying these kids and you're putting it in these parents' accounts. There's something wrong with y'all. There is something morally wrong with you that you're signing 14, all you fucking agents out there talking to fucking teens. There's something wrong with you. Yeah. Agents, company, you're talking to fucking teenagers. Right. And you're, you're going on single mothers, you're going on these mothers that's just fucking selling their kids like they're fucking, you're pimping your kid. But the, Put it in account, these, it should be lawyers, there should be already lawyers set up, and whatever deal comes, it should be an account 100% non-touch until these kids are out of fucking school. But the problem is that a lot of these kids are 18 when they're signing these NIL deals, so technically in the eyes of the law, they're adults. But at 18 years old, we all go back to when we were 18, you don't really fucking know what to do, so who are you going to trust? You're going to trust your parents, you're going to trust the people that you feel like are closest to you, but we've all seen firsthand what happens when that bread comes in and how people start yes. acting. See? So my question is this, does the <clears throat> parents owe the kid some type of transparency about the talent that the kid has and the money he's bringing in? Think about child uh, prodigies in, in the entertainment business, right? You're talking about the film stars, right? They come in, they're on Disney, they're making a bunch of money. They don't, they not thinking about money. They thinking about how many toys I can get. I can go to any park I want. We shut down Toys R Us for me. Like, I'm not thinking about, I just made two million, right? So then you, 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 you move ahead and you go backwards to how in the hood, you got credit. I got a fucking, um, I got my um, social security number, right? Parents in the hood use a social security number to get the credit to get shit, right? So then by the time you get to 18, you get in college, you're like, why do I have bad credit? Mm -hmm. I should not have bad credit. I don't even know what fucking credit is. But this goes back to the, to the understanding that you don't know, your parents kind of know, but don't know. But once the money starts coming in, do they owe you? The understanding of where the money's at, how much money's being made. By the time I'm 18, I should have X amount of money, but now I don't. And you have, like, that's what a lot of conservative ship is going towards when you talk about Britney Spears and all of them. It's like, how the fuck do you own all of this shit that I did? I put the work in. How but that's why they have Coogan accounts. Now. That's why they have Coogan accounts for um, for kids. That You're trying to protect the, the star now because... Their, their, their parents are just manipulating the situation for the better themselves. But that's for entertainment, right? That doesn't necessarily apply to sports because it's just happening now. Really? No, no, it, it, no, I was about to say, it happens it, in sports. Yeah, it happens in sports. I mean, yeah, it, it happens, happens in sports, sports. a lot. A but lot, what they do, a what, lot. what happens in sports is this. Um, because you can't sign, you can't have kids sign legal documents as 
teens. Yep. You wait till they turn 18, and then you try to have them sign promissory notes to you. Yep. And you get stuck with, with that. Right? Which that should be fucking illegal. Yep. It is. But it is, there's just so many loopholes that should be like just cleared up. Right? You're 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 dealing with a new market, but you're just these kids are being like these kids ain't these kids ain't touching none of this money. Yeah, I just yeah, yeah, I just feel like too, like like a parent, right? Like if you're trying to pimp your kid and you depending on your kid to make it like you gotta you gotta feel low as fuck. As a like just and as an adult. Like, 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 you know, I'm, I, I know you don't because you, because, you know, they feel like, oh, I raised you or yeah, I birthed you owe me. And, and all this. But it's like, well, you had your chance, right? You was once 18, 17, 16 years old. Don't nobody tell you to run around here and, and do this, all this other bullshit now that I have a chance to make it. And yes, I'm going to the, thank you for taking me to, thank you for being a parent. Thank yeah. you. Being what thank you're you, to be. Thank you. You won an award for being a great parent. Thank you. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Listen, at the end of the day, I put in this work. I, you know, I came to the gym, I put the work in. Why do I owe you? Thank you. Yep. Like, you should have did better with your time when you was here. Real shit. Don't blame what, what your parents did and your trauma and all that. I don't yeah. want to hear all that. I got trauma too. But I'm, I'm the one trying to make it out of my family. This and I think, and, and I think ruined me. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's just so fucked up. It's just so, it's just so messed up. Because but do we I, feel like I, it's malicious? I mean, I see it a lot it's now. It's jealousy. It's, today, but now. the shit has got so fucked up yeah. now with the mixtapes, and you kind of were just in the beginning of that generation. Yeah. Where kids now, even at nine, ten, my son's the best eight year old in the country. Yeah. It's like, fuck, Fresh. eight years old. No, like, like, you're a loser. You're, you're a loser. You're a loser to me. You're a loser, I get, I get you're a loser, to, me. You're a loser get, to me. That's what I said. I get the intentions. You, you know, you want to put your, but you're, you're trying to, you're trying to live through your child. Yes. You're trying to, um, if you raise your child right, that child will take care of you. Right. Right. <laughs> right. That your child will. If you did everything you supposed to have done, your child will naturally take care of you. Yep. Right? But the, the fact that you're trying to figure out ways to make sure he don't do, like, you know, I'm going to, you know, sign a percentage with the agent, do this back deal with the agent, do this back deal, we get the, like, what the fuck are y'all doing? I can't wait till agents try to come sign my kid. Like, I can't wait. Like, like, that's what I'm saying. I can't like, wait. like, agents are calling today. I can't yes. wait. Business advisors are calling today. Like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? Trying to get ahead of the curve. Like, there ain't no head of the curve. Like, like, no, he's high school. Yeah. Well, fuck you. But what, what advice? Like, I'm gonna listen to, like, I'm really going through it too. But what advice would you give and how do you navigate that situation? Because everybody who's a wealth manager ain't a good wealth manager. Everybody exactly. who's a financial planner ain't a good finance. Like, all that shit sounds great. But then you, you start to have to weed through, all right, who are these companies, who are these people? I'm even seeing it now, and it's no knock to a lot of these kids, but I think even this year we saw so many kids with agents who obviously weren't from the established companies. I don't got a problem with that, but it's how do you know who's a good agent, who's a bad agent, who's actually navigated this territory, and who's not trying to take advantage of you? A good I mean, agent. I think they all are. I mean, I think they all are. Yeah. They, uh, everybody's taking yeah. it. I mean, yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, because I mean, you're entering a game that you don't know. Your parents don't know, your you parents, don't know. Your parents, so, yeah. The that, agent, the, the financial advisor, everybody, the realtor, they all in it. They all in it. They, they're getting kickbacks. They're, 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 kick they're going off. They're going off they, I mean, so, sorry. They're going after the mothers because, one, they don't know nothing. Yep. They don't know what questions to ask. All they're looking at is a bottom number, the seven million, this, that. Like, they don't know what the fuck they're looking at. Like, you go, this person then gave you this, this, this lawyer. How you know these two niggas didn't talk? Right. And more times than no not. How, how, how the fuck? Like, how you, you no, structure sure. these deals? Like, don't tell, like, like, even with college, don't gas me. I've been there. I've done it. I've negotiated my own deals. You can't, like, what is the bottom line if he does nothing? Mm. How long is this contract? Where are the fucking check going? Yep. Who's, who's, whose account is that? Like, what, like, th there's questions that need to be asked. Mm -hmm. Like, what is the percentage? Who sent them here? Does he get a kickback? Does he get a kickback from who? You or... Like there's because everybody wants something when they around your kid. Yeah, I mean yeah, there's NBA there, there's NBA something. players in was it three sixty three sixty deals. Yeah. NBA players today that are paying money to brothers, sisters, cousins that they don't even know they're doing. Real shit. Mm -hmm. Because the financial advisors that's 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 on their account was hired by those. So obviously they're not gonna tell you that they gotta pay these people this money. <laughs> they just backstreet. La, la. Like you just you you you're just sitting there being just taking advantage of. Man. Yeah, you know what I didn't like about my situation when I grew up is that I didn't get a chance to even 
an interview with other agents. Like, I knew my agent when I was in the ninth grade. Mm. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? I knew my agent, I knew my financial advisor, I knew everybody when I was in the ninth grade. And, you know, it was like, I didn't get a chance to go meet with other agents or meet or like, you know, play the game. So it was like everything was already. But did you want to at that age? Looking back now, obviously hindsight, but at that age, were you just like, oh, they said he's my people. Cool. I mean, I mean, I'm rock with this I mean I'm just going with the flow because yep. I'm 15, 16. I'm in the ninth grade. I don't know if I'm going to make it. To, I just know that, OK, I got, you know, boom, I got this. I got that. And, you know, life is good. All right. I got a roof over my head. Got you what know? I need. I didn't have a father figure. So I'm in that predicament mm -hmm. of a mother with just two kids. And here come, you know, the first you know, hey, we could do this for you. So I've seen it. So I found out, even in college, right? I signed my national letter of intent in the library with the librarian, right? Didn't know what the fuck I was signing, right? And I was 17 at the time. Mm -hmm. So understanding that when you're signing the national letter of intent, it's voluntary, one. No one knows that. Yeah. You don't have to sign it. Two, when you sign it, you're signing over your rights to the clearinghouse that you have to, one, show up to this university and play. Two, you now cannot make any money off of mm -hmm. your name, image, and likeness, right? Name, image, and likeness, right? But what is National Letter of Intent? N-L-I-N-I-L. I started to really research this shit. It's really dig into the, the, the word magic behind how they really put us into a bind before we even know it. Mm -hmm. So if you sign a contract before you're 18, with no parental guidance or no, no law, no um, no lawyer or anybody that's giving you advice, the contract is void. The contract is void. It yeah. don't exist. Don't right? exist. So if you're 17 and you sign a natural living ten, you don't got no parental guidance or no lawyer. They owe you something, right? So all these years they've been fraudulently doing business with athletes, binding them into these contracts. And then when you, um, you infringe on it, you do something that's fucked up and they, they penalize you for it, now you're out of six, seven games because you sold your jersey or you sold some shoes, but the contract had already been voided. They've already penalized you for shit that you shouldn't have been penalized mm -hmm. for. And it affects your draft status or your stock going into the NBA. So a lot of guys have been treated and misused because they don't know what the legalese is, the word magic, how this shit really well, works. Who the fuck's gonna pay? And that's the why they fuck you over. And this is entertainment too. Paying that lawyer four hundred an hour, five hundred an hour, six hundred an hour. Who's gonna pay to do that and think, oh, I can take on the NCAA? And traditionally, how it was, I would have tied this shit up for a couple of years. Yep. At some point, somebody's gonna cave. You know, who's that lawyer gonna take it pro bono until they get some bread back? and give up millions of dollars worth of work to try and make that thing happen. Obviously, thanks to Ed O'Bannon and a bunch of other people. Right, and that's where I got the research yeah. from. I actually talked to Ed, we talked about it, and that prompted me to go into, what the fuck is this National Letter of Intent, really? What, it's a voluntary document that puts you into the clearinghouse. Now you gotta abide by the fucking GPA, the, the SAT, all of these things for college eligibility. Mm -hmm. We don't even know that. My mom and dad didn't know nothing about <laughs> contracts and none of that shit. So one year renewable. Hiring a lawyer, that was out of the question. We couldn't afford that shit. Mm -hmm. So if it's not available to you, yeah. you fucked. And you see now with the portal, but one year renewable, which was kind of, even as a young kid hearing like, wait, this is not guaranteed for four years? Like, nah, no, I'm this shit gets year to year. Renewed every year. You have no idea. Yeah. That's, that's why you got to... Uh, Y'all got to really watch e e King Henry. Is mm -hmm. that the Serena Williams? The best part of the, that story that no one's, that they didn't that tell, they that they didn't tell in the story is the reason they got all of that training for free is because the father knew the loophole. You cannot sign deals with minors. Mm. You cannot sign a deal with the minor. So their signatures didn't mean shit. Wow. And so they just signed. So you're signing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? And then what they do is go pro, and you have this deal with them to split their, their, their earnings. No, you don't. You have a deal with me. I'm not a tennis player. <laughs> you can sue me, y'all. And that's, that's what a father does. Woo. Mm. He takes a he takes the he yeah, takes yeah. this take for them. Yep. Right? Yeah, yeah, we'll all sign. You'll sign girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sign yeah. paper. I sign. 
Go. Yeah, and then y'all go out and get all this training and become great. Go on and be professionals. As soon as they start coming back, the girls owe you money. Who? <laughs> Who owe you money? <laughs> oh, no, you, oh, no, legally, you can't sign with minors. <laughs> no, no, that's illegal. They're, they're professional. No, no, no. You, I owe you. Yeah. How much are you? I ain't, I ain't got, ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing. <laughs> I don't got nothing. I don't got nothing. I don't got that. I'm like, I'm sorry. Real <laughs> sick. This is my house. Man. <laughs> and then the girls yeah. go out, but yeah. that's that's what the sacrifice as a parent is. Mm. And that and that's what I I you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he understood that. Like, how am I gonna get this millions and millions of trainers free training for my daughters unless I understand the loopholes of this. And that's the one, that's the biggest thing that they left out of that whole wow. King Henry story. That, you know, that they tried to sue the girls for a reneged deal, but you can't sign deals with minors, so they don't owe you a dollar. So okay. we've got the, we've got the, you know, shout out to Barron and our, our, our legendary research producing team. So in 1994, they changed the age eligibility rule. This wasn't really in the movie, but they changed the age eligibility rule that you couldn't turn pro at 14. They called it the Capriati rule for Jennifer Capriati. Yep. So at the time, Martina Hingis and Venus were that age. So I told Richard, either you got to turn pro, we got to go pro now, or you're going to play three tournaments, three tournaments, then at 18, they can set you free. Well, I knew he was going to let her turn pro. He had to because no one was going to dictate to Richard Williams what the time frame was here. So, Yeah. Makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. And another thing Both. I would say to these young kids Both. is, man, you know, don't be scared, man. Like, don't be scared to ask questions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, saying don't be scared to leave people behind, family members, even your close ones, even the ones that birthed you. Um, you know, you have a life to live and you have to take care of yourself um, at the end of the day because you're going to see a lot of people choose color. So yep. make sure you're always taking care of yourself first before anything because you don't owe anybody anything. Um, you put the work in and... You're gonna see a lot of people change, man, once them dollar signs start coming in. So, and it's okay to tell people no, and it's okay to fall back. You know, I still love you, but you know, right now I'm on a different, I'm on a different, uh, I'm, I'm on a different lane. And, and, right and now, that's, that's, you said it right, because at the end of the day, while, while the kid is sitting there trying to figure out what's going on, you gotta, you gotta really think that they chose the money over you already. Yeah, already chose. Right, so the fact that you're talking about money and doing, they've chosen the money <laughs> over you. Yeah, yeah. Right? You just ain't realized that yet. You're, you're, this ain't fighting, these ain't parents fighting each other. It's one parent's fighting you for the money. Yep. Right, yep. where the money's gonna go. Mm -hmm. Right, the, the money's for your child. That's one who's going out there playing. So, right. you know what I mean. That's all. Right. That's, 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 that's it. I don't even know what the, the the conversation <laughs> is. I don't know what it's all about. It's, yeah. you know, the money's that person, whoever's earning that person. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if you're struggling, you're struggling. Hey, that's yeah, hopefully you got, your good deeds. He gives it back to yeah. you. Other than that, that's his money to deal with how he wants. He doesn't owe you nothing. Yeah, and you shouldn't quit your job. Like, like I told my son, job, you make it to the NBA, just give me some of them young, them young little things. Go ahead and throw it. I know what Gil wants. I know what Gil wants. Gil don't want to go. Listen, Gil don't want to go. Tell me the strip club a couple times. Give me some of them motherfucking 20, 30 thoughts. You was a funny ass. You was a funny ass. That's all, bro. Yo, what's wrong with him? I gotta get better with time. Just let him dance. Just let him dance over here. Come on, come here, baby. Come here, come here. Oh, 5.30 a.m. workout. Right, it's a lot of 5.30 a.m. workout. 40.50, you know, they don't look so decent. They ain't, they ain't. They different, ain't they? <laughs> different. That's 38. 40, but they ain't keeping themselves together like I am. But the, the last <laughs> I work out every day, baby. <laughs> you know, them 30, them 20, 35. Go ahead, go ahead. The last thing I'll say in this Michael Orr situation, and it, you know, it's been interesting to see the people's reaction. When that movie came out, a lot of us felt that way. Like, yo, what the fuck is this? White savior <laughs> bullshit. Treating this, but I ain't never had a bed or toothbrush. Like, what the fuck? Like, but so from his, yeah, he didn't know. Oh, she had to show him how to, how to fucking block, hit the sled, like, get the fuck out of here. But um, it was the reality that he's 37 now. He just found out in February about this conservatorship, but he was getting bred in the NFL at that point. So he wasn't necessarily really tripping. I think it's right around the time he got drafted, kind of all that stuff going on. But now he goes back and looks at it, and that's just another thing I would suggest to a lot of these, these young kids out there. Even if you don't know what these contracts mean, just start reading them. And if you do have lawyers or agents or whoever the fuck is around, start asking them questions about what all this shit means in there. Mm -hmm. In perpetuity and all this other fucking shit 
that you see in these deals. Because, Gil, to your point, you're going to start seeing a lot of these deals, mm -hmm. and it makes it easier. You don't got to be a lawyer or go to law school or whatever, but you look at enough contracts, you start to figure out language, and any shit that's concerning to you, point that shit out. They got red lines. Like, you don't have to do everything that's in that contract. Somebody has some bullshit in there, you can red line and say, fuck you, I'm not doing that. Can I say this? Mm -hmm. It's important to know how to read. Don't let these other new aged kids, these motherfuckers think they cool, because you read a book and you know how to read, that that's not cool. Because when the shit come down to it, and you need to read the contract and understand that shit, and you don't know what these words say, yeah. mm -hmm. right? You don't know what this Big shit means. Big-ass words. Right, it's, it's not bad to be intelligent or a genius or none of that shit. Like, reading means something. Being able to understand shit, being intelligent and articulate means something. When you can't spell and you can't read, nigga, take advantage of you. 100%. I can sniff it out. No, oh, this nigga's stupid. Yeah. Stupid. Just give me one page. Yeah. Just give me one page of the contract. <laughs> yeah. Let me have like yeah, four. Yeah, yeah, I ain't read, man, one page. Give Put all one this page. shit on one page. <laughs> 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 we can't, what can you say, man? Give us one pages. We just need one page. <laughs> hey, hey, just like book. Auto, auto that shit to me. I can hear it. Right. Yeah. Uh. Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Out of my shit. Man. One page. If it's over two pages, man, you go. It's gonna be, you gonna get that back. They, they, and they, and they know. Ask what them big-ass words mean in that shit. You gotta ask questions. And another thing, the more pressure they put on you to sign that shit, oh, hurry, we gotta get it done, or we gonna pull it, that means the more they want you. So you yes. take your fucking time. You don't gotta do no shit on nobody else's schedule. That shit takes as long as it takes. Yeah, it's called an evaluation. When you get an evaluation, somebody come in, I'm gonna offer you this. Say no. Because that's your evaluation. Right there, I'm going to give you a million dollars to... No, nah, I know if you're going to give me a million, somebody else is going to give me ten. I know I'm worth more than this one that you're giving me. Fuck that. Give me some more. I need some more. Let me prove... Let me go ask a couple more motherfuckers how much I'm really worth. Yeah. You trying to lowball me. Well, let's, you know, let, let's put a button on this thing, get to the last segment of the show. Mostly fans. We ask y'all to drop questions and <laughs> comments in the chat. Uh, so here are the best ones. So this first one comes from a uh, underdog username D Loud Pack. That's a good one. D Loud I can read Pack. I mean, D Loud Pack. He's smoking. But not for that 10K. That 10K. That that's, 10K. that's for that Gil. That's for that Gil. <laughs> yeah. He want to know what's worse. Oh, see, I can't let you see this shit, Gil. What's worse, lying to a player that you're going to extend him, Daryl Morey, or telling the chat that you'll hit the blend at 10K? <laughs> and then renegotiate. Yeah. Don't put them hands up. Put them hands down. No, what I'm, what, but we, we, we established after the last show when we took the hiatus, that was the last show, y'all had to come back to me with a, a summer program. And no. I said 15. It was a back year, dude. Down to 2,500. All right. All right, right? So it's 20, it's, it, no, it's 12, I mean 12, 12, 5. It's 12, 5. All right. 12, all right. 5, hit the blunt. All right, it didn't blow it in the All right, let's do this. So what, we got like two weeks left for this? Yeah, right? and then right. once that's over with, all right, we then, got a new. Then we go into a new season. I'm throwing up a high ass number. Uh, uh, but you got okay, at least, okay, okay. You got okay, at least be in a hot box so, with us. You got a hot box. At least. I don't even know what that is. That means you just you're not smoking, but that's you in the room that's with sauna, us. That sauna, you, you got in there? there? We gonna sit in there? We gonna sit in there? We gonna smoke? You just gonna sit in there with us? You're not gonna smoke? In the in your sauna? That's hot as fuck that. Right. Yeah, that's the point, nigga. We doing that Native American shit, dude. We gonna see because you're not smoking, but you you getting high. Because so we sit actually, no, in the sit, sit, sit there with your, ah, like just sitting there, y'all. Yeah, because you actually that. lost, but you didn't. You lost, but you didn't. Because we hit you 10K. said 12, but five. we hit 10. But that was last. That was the last quarter Gil, answer. Gil. We said I mean, 12, 5. We Gil, you said 12, we was five. never gonna hit 10. No, I, we said 12, 5. When I said 15, you said 12, 5. I said, okay, cool. How many you think we are gonna get on, on our first day back, season two? Season two. First day back. I mean, think we live. We gonna get live with ads. And we should have do, ads. Don't we should do have no, some don't ads. Don't do no twenty thousand. Don't oh, do all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. First day back live for season two. Eighty five hundred. Eighty five hundred. That's it. Oh, oh bet, 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 bet that, bet. I bet that, bet that. Then we go smoke. Then we get. We get why, 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 why? No, no bet no, that. No, I want. No, I want that. No, eighty five hundred first day. Hey, back. bring in the conservative ship. Paperwork. Bet that. Give me the paperwork. I'm just saying. Ten. We get ten. So he. he you said eight. We're, take, we're taking. We're taking a, uh, like a month off. So no, right, if that's we're what taking what a month off, then you know you lose. If we get to ten, we lose no traction. If we get to ten, first day back. First day back. How do I go from 12 5 to back to 10? Because it's a new season. No, it's a new season for the new season. 
I'm thinking 20. 20? First day? First day no, back? just for the, the whole chat. season. So, so that's good. If we, go to, if we, so if we get to 20 in the second season, 20K yeah. in the live chat, he is smoking. No, I just said it's first like day. I, I know we going to do I like that bet, though. I like that. It's like y'all I like gave 20. up on the 12-5. Uh, no, nah, we didn't no. give up because you y'all made Y'all got it. the 11. Now y'all scared. No. <laughs> we had 11. We got 11.2 to the 11.2 today is crazy. Gil, this is not a question, but it's a comment from Nobody J. He said, Gil's a liar. I'll never watch the pod again. <laughs> Let me say it again. Gil is a liar. I will never watch the pod again. I love it. I love it. Nobody J. Nobody hey, J. Hey. You should get mad at McCann's for renegotiating no. terms. I said 10. Huh? I said 10. That was the old one before we took on my break. I'm not, I'm not actually said, qualified. Got, I'm not qualified as a negotiator. We got back from Vegas. We renewed it. We said 12-5. All right, 12-5. Okay, that's first fine. Episode. Hey, that's fine. That's so going into that's season fine. two? That's fine. 12-5? Yeah, season hey, two. Y'all got the end of the month? No. 12-5? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so the last the week. Month, 12, so the five. last week is just last us three. And then we watch. 12-5. 12-5 last week. We can get to 12-5. 12-5 last week. Gil hitting the blunt. Believe Round that. Round up, y'all are not doing the, shit. It's the end of I summer. Sit in the hot, hot musty ass. Not for the summer. blunt. No, no, no. No, not for the blunt. No, we can, we can still about hard to smoke a blunt. We're going spirit. We ain't got to be in there. We were just saying just to be in there not smoking, you could just. I just want me to die. Contact. <laughs> 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 I just want me to die. <laughs> so question number two. Uh, this comes from underdog username NYCQ. Said, what's all y'all favorite moments since starting the show and favorite moments since meeting each other? Listen, when I met McC- see, I've never said when I okay. met McCants, right? Okay. I didn't notice him. <laughs> okay, I, okay, I'm, okay, same, right? okay, 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 go ahead. Yeah. Okay, go so ahead, I, you know, I'm in the, I'm in uh, I'm in 24, and you just see this big you that just walking through mad dog and everybody like, mm-hmm. you know, you look like damn. <laughs> like, is that- <laughs> Like I'm trying to figure out that McKin- McKin- It took about two months before I actually said something to him. Like, cause he just, like, he just, like, like, yeah, like, 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 you don't want those problems. Like, he's just yeah. sitting, like, got his water bottle, just all water, just, I'm just like, oh. Uh. I had to wait till, like, you know how you, like, wait till he go in the gym, he was in the gym, and then he shot and he smiled. So he's like, hey, hey, how you doing, man? What's up, man? <laughs> Because <laughs> that, that Terminator shit, he was all bro, like, no fuck. Bro, like, I'm trying, like, I'm I trying swear. to figure out, did I ever say some shit in my bro, bottle? I, I swear, he's, they not, he's not fucking lying, bro. <laughs> like, word for word, that shit is hilarious. Because I never, I would dap him up, be like, but everybody yeah. walks by and dap yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. But he's always in story mode. Yeah. Yeah. He's talking to somebody. You know, he always got a whole crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. <laughs> he's just, what's up, Gil? I see Gil, there you go. But in the gym, I was training Katino Mobley's son, and he was over there doing squats and shit. He, <laughs> get his shit. Yeah. Oh, that's McCann. Man, you ain't got no podcast, man. <laughs> you ain't, you're supposed to be on a podcast, yeah, yeah. man. And we had that conversation. It was like, yo, that shit but, changed everything for me. It was like, nah, I wasn't thinking about it, but shit, fuck it. What's up? You know chill. <laughs> I'm with it, my nigga. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think for me, I think just uh, just starting from the beginning when we first walked in here, mm-hmm. you know, we didn't know um, where where we were gonna be headed. Um, you know, now that we have the original crew here, I think just us growing, mm-hmm. us growing. Um, you know, we made enemies. You know, we made some friends. You know, we <laughs> laughed. Um, you know, we started some stuff. But that's, I mean, that's the you know, I, I call this open therapy. Yeah. Um, you know, we all got a, a chance to know each other more. Um, you know, we've done some great things on this podcast, and um, I'm just grateful. You know, I'm just grateful for everything, knowing everybody, and being able to make connections. Yeah. And I gotta say, uh, after we did the the No Chill episode, yeah, and um, I didn't know how well I was gonna be able to gel with y'all as far as even giving opportunity. He wouldn't even. It was like a test mm-hmm. test run for me, and I didn't know it until I actually spoke to Tim. And um, but I knew like me and Gil talking in the gym was like we he know the game right, and I've always been a fan of his. So knowing how his mind works for the game, and then we had the conversation about Kobe and the whole nine, that kind of changed everything for me. It's like yo, if I was given the opportunity to do some shit with this nigga, like I'm with it. So having a conversation with Tim. Who, you know, Tim Livingston, if y'all don't know who it is, check him out, whistleblower, you know, Spotify, he's a great 
you know, he does his thing, right? <laughs> um, but he he had a conversation with me like, yo, we want, we're bringing together these group, this this group. And he said Brandon's name. I'm like, oh, shit. You know, BJ, me, and Gil? Mm, that's going to be interesting. And then we had the first episode. It was like, oh, this, we about to kill him. Yeah, I'm about to like, yeah. We about to kill him. I'm, 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 yo, 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 it's going to be easy. Uh, it's going to be uh, easy. Should we get some drinking here, too? Man, <laughs> what? Oh, man. And the setup. We're uh, YouTube. Uh, yeah. You can't take us or flag oh, us. We're talking <laughs> about regular beverages. Man. For sure. And the setup. The setup, like yeah. how from the no chill shit. And then we came in. I'm like, oh, yep. oh, this different. It's we about different. to yeah. kill him, kill him. And your vision for it was like, nah, man, we're going to do it like first take. But we just gonna shoot the shit, you know. Wear what you want, come up there whenever you want to come up, nigga. Just come up, and we just gonna talk shit. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, me talk shit with you? Yeah. Shit, they gonna be we're, mad. We're all so, what about you, man? You know, we ain't never people, we don't ask I know, you I questions. Just host. I just nah, you know, nigga. I, nah, but I, how you you know you so, know you you know. How you highlight for me is the first week of every month when I check that direct deposit <laughs> and the underdog bread. <laughs> Has squarely landed in. It's not a lot of money. I'm still poor, but you know, because niggas. Back by the pool, we still poor. We are still poor. Oh, yeah. I, got, yeah. I, 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 gotta, I had to walk here. Huh? Man. I mean, <laughs> Uber. I think as we talked about this thing, and obviously me and Gil been doing the No Chill, we get yeah. this show, and they, they mention your guys' names and people want to come in. And that was my thing, you know, obviously just what you had done for LA and kind of interacting with you a little bit before that and had an interview yeah. on Out of Pocket or whatever. Yeah. And then Rashad, and it's like, you know, we always joke, but even we had you on No Chill, I remember it's like right after I finished college, but the respect we had for you and that crew over at UNC of that McDonald's game back yeah. in the day with you <laughs> hitting the shit up, like, sure. you know, with just two names. I was super excited. Obviously, Miko and Kenyon as well. Just all the names you hear, and it's like, yo, these are people I definitely rock with. Obviously, me and Gilbert rock with each other for a couple of years. But now it's kind of an extension of that to be able to have real hoopers. And y'all know my feelings about old media. I worked on that side for a long ass time. Don't really fuck with it for all the reasons we mentioned earlier in the show. A lot of squares, yep. a lot of opinions. Anytime somebody's like, yo, what was you thinking in that moment is somebody who's never hooped before? Because if y'all ask me that shit, I'm going to give you the answer. I don't fucking know. I ain't playing the league. Like, <laughs> what the fuck you want me to tell you? Like, but you I are. got three people right here to answer that shit. But you are a hooper. Yeah, but... You know, I, I played a little college, bit. Bro. Don't check yeah, the stats. Yeah, I was, don't like, check the stats. Everybody was a hoop. Like, everybody was a hoop. Don't check the stats. Let me lie about that shit. It's all right, though. But, everybody on this couch is D1. Everybody D1. For but, sure. But hooping and kind of, you know, into my career reaching that point, but being able to have you guys here, because that was always the thing with me, even with this show. People are like, oh, you should jump in more, give your opinions. Nah, I got three motherfuckers who played much better and higher level basketball than me. But just the way that we're able to talk candidly about all this stuff and what we've been able to do this first season. Yeah. The chat, a lot of haters. Dumbledore, uh, somebody said I look like somebody from Zelda today. <laughs> I see all that shit. You said Zelda? <laughs> Whatever the name was from Zelda. <laughs> but I appreciate that shit. I see all of it and just the support. But there's also the positive, too. Yeah, like, yeah. When, when the shit's not flowing, I got people in my mentions clowning. Like, why you ain't do this and why you ain't do that? So just to see how much love we got mm -hmm. being in Vegas at the Summer League trying to duck uh, Darvin Ham as he was rolling <laughs> through the wind in the encore like Debo in the L.A. had in the high socks looking like a, a light-skinned cholo, like, yo. <laughs> you know? But it's Darwin, dog. Don't choke me out, Darwin. We rocking with you. Out, but just, just seeing all, everything we've been able to do the last five months, and obviously we had Jeremy Levine uh, from, from Underdog Fantasy on the show. Yep. Yeah. And to know that that season two's coming, we're getting ready to do more shit. And we keep telling y'all out there, we coming for y'all. So it don't matter if y'all fuck with us, y'all don't. We've tried to book some people. They've been supportive, come through. Other people, funny style. We don't really yep. play that shit. Yep. All right, we just do some real shit here. If you come to this show, you funny know what style. you're going. Funny, funny style. style. Like draft queen. Yeah, let's yeah. keep draft queen. The draft queen. Yeah. yeah. Like old media. Yeah. Only fan. Yeah. What is it? Only fan duel. Only yeah. fan duel. Yeah, the, season, yeah, season two, we're going to keep nothing but D1 players and, and people playing the yeah. WNBA on couch. Uh, Jeezy, uh, come back, man. Jeezy, come <laughs> fuck with us. Yeah, and Jeezy, Jeezy, come fuck yeah, with Jeezy, us. Jeezy, come fuck with us. Jeezy. And real rappers that love who? Yeah. Wayne, Lil Wayne, what's up, baby? But and it's like, this is the thing. We're always going to keep it real and authentic. So if y'all want to pull up, you're going to pull up. You know we're going to have a good conversation. We're not that old school media where we're trying to gotcha or whatever. Yep. Even we had Zion, everybody was pressing us. Why are you talking about the other shit? That's that man's personal business. That's his work. He can figure it out. He young, That's he's 23. Work. That's his work. Don't, you got to <laughs> control the work. I ain't, see, I ain't see nothing wrong he did. His work ain't the show's work. He ain't did nothing wrong. He a young man out here living his life. Hey, let but, the work work, mm -hmm. man. Let, <laughs> let the <laughs> Work, work. Let she said, work, I was work. the one. I was the one. <laughs> I, I got you when you were eating, when you had the, when you had the sodas and stuff by the bed. <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> we, don't care. <laughs> we all drink we soda. All, 
care. We don't he care. Said, uh, damn it, he said we don't care. We don't care, baby. The sit nigga down. does Mountain Dew commercials. Sit down, shut up. He play, do Mountain hey, Dew commercials. You go have the Baja Blast please. near the bed. What you say? You say play stupid games. What? Play stupid games, and she got a stupid award. Uh -huh. Man, win stupid prizes. Man, oh my but, lord. Nah, so we're gonna keep rocking this thing out. Like I said, we got an amazing crew. You know, it's gonna expand. We're gonna open up the family a little yeah. bit more. Shout out to Underdog. They got some amazing shows coming. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Jeremy Levine from Underdog. Back season, all right? Super Max, first team all NBA. Rookie. Oh. First team. First team rookie. Oh, Wait till oh, I come yeah. back. You yeah. know how they say you come back second season? Yes. Come on, man. You come back with a suit on. With come a on, man. What's, What's up? up? With a tux. What's I'm up? Tux? I'm wearing a tux. I'm having, I'm having an underdog meet. No draw. Underdog meet. <laughs> no. Damn. <laughs> Lord, I'm going to be covered here so just the viewers can see. What's <laughs> happening? Oh, it's happening, right. ladies. Hey, I see what season two. I see what season two. I see what season two going to be on. Sad. Yeah, I'm going to definitely have a robe yeah. on. I'm going to definitely with the robe. We, we appreciate it, y'all. I got the foot beat right here. You know, see, I got to see this who it is. Get the members up. What's going on? Get the members up. We appreciate everybody rocking with us. And seriously, chat, a lot of good people in the chat to see the way that y'all have connected, form relationships, friendships. Y'all know to pull up every day, 11.30 Pacific, 2.30 Eastern. Get the jokes off, get the comments off. A lot of insightful takes and all that good shit, man. So keep rocking with us. Thank you for getting us to 11.2K today. Yeah. The most we've had concurrence since we started doing the show. Stay and we had the boss here today. We had the, the top Caucasian at the company up here. Top so you helped us run those numbers up. You did it for us. The number one, Rio. Uh, Rio. If he would have pulled up and it would have been a janky day, but like, who am I to pull the plug on you, Negro? Plug on you, Negro. Come on, nigga. Not my ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> but we will see y'all tomorrow. This is Gil's Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoop, whoop. 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 Whoop.